So, uh, you're back again. Wow. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, what I like to call the culture shock. I am your host, Seth McAndrew, with a Bring Me The Horizon t-shirt on. And my guest here today, introduce yourself. My name is Terrence Miller. I went to high school with my man, Seth McFarley. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right. So how the first question is, how do we meet? Um, I think we met, man, we met. Yeah, I think you were uh, in 10th grade and I was, damn, was I a senior? We met in Woodsec though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you started getting down in Woodsec. Um, I got transferred over to uh, first period, right? We had first period together. Yeah. No, yeah. it was. Fourth? Fourth, maybe? Yeah, it, it was fourth period. It was fourth okay, period because we had Danny and everybody else in the class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I'm pretty sure. Did we have it for two years or did I just have you for the one year? Uh, no, it was two years. Two years. Okay. I remember the first year we did not talk. I mean, you were not. Because like I was, because I've, I said this on the last podcast, I'm not a very, you know, go out be like, hey, hey, how you doing? How you doing? Type guy. Yeah. I'm just, I just, you know, I keep to myself. I stay out of bullshit and I just don't talk to people. Which kind of, which is weird, because yeah, yeah, I'm a man. podcast host. Is what I'm doing now. <laughs> now. You're getting out of your show, man. I felt it. I was, I was pretty, pretty much the same way in high school, man. I, I was really just real it. fucking shy, and I don't know how to talk to people, so I don't like. Yeah, I, I don't, don't want to talk to people. <laughs> yeah, that, I don't want to be like, oh fuck, here we go. <laughs> yeah, I, I was, I was not a big fan of uh, like social interactions uh, throughout high school. And it was a lot of it had to do with like confidence, you know. I just not, yeah. not that confident. So, how long have we known each other? Damn, now it's been like <laughs> now. <laughs> damn, what year are we in? Twenty twenty one. Yeah, um, it's been like fuck three years, four years. Yeah, maybe four. Yeah, or we'll shoot for four. It's like I said, I've always known about you, but we didn't start uh kicking it or you know talking until um like our second year of Woodtech. Yeah, how did you know about me? Like, find out uh dude me i was, was just, it just like you. word of mouth of other people or no no nah, nah, just, just seeing you yeah just seeing you around you know yeah you, you what just, was okay, okay finish your yeah, you just, and then you just had like yeah. a, a notable like like character you know what i mean you just were like a that, that chill goofy guy you know because you know guy, yeah so what was your first impression i think what our first interaction we were talking about bands we started um you had it. You had a band shirt on or something. I'm pretty sure. I always wear band shirts. So. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh yeah, this dude, this dude's really in the scene like that. So, um, yeah, I think uh, one of our first interactions, like we were just sharing bands with each other, and then we were talking back and forth about because uh, I think I was wearing a Asking Alexandria T-shirt. You were, you were. Yeah, it was one of because I I got one of them around here. I don't I don't. Yeah, it was the um, was it the one with like the worm bunny type? fucking creature thing with the dude's face all like mangled up dude I, I thought it was the one like the album cover um damn what's that album it's pretty much him just walking walking on stage with like a, a woman in a vending machine yeah yeah i yeah. think so, yeah um, i can't remember the name of the album either but yeah i yeah just slipped mm. past me that's actually one of the first bands i've ever listened to with that that album yeah I grew up around that like type of music. Like I grew up in the suicide, not the suicide silence era, but like the um, Uh, suicide suicide season, suicide season era of bring me the horizon and stand up and scream of asking Alexandria and like, you know, the, the so even as a kid, you were uh, exposed to, okay. Cause of my brothers, they grew up. Nice. Nice. And one of my brothers, it's a he, back in the day, he was a huge uh, Suicide Silence fan. Yeah. yeah. So I, that was, I kind of grew up around that type of music. I have no clue what the fuck they were saying until I yeah, got yeah. older. Until I got older and actually listened to the music, you could kind of understand what's going on. Yeah. And then uh, since I grew up around that type of music, it was easy for me to just, you know, pick it up and be like, oh, yeah, this, you know. Shit's tight. 
Yeah, um, that's tight, bro, because I no, no one in my family listens to that type of music. So I was uh I was like in middle school. I had my homie Ernie show me uh Ask in Alexandria. And I was more in it for like the clean vocals, you know. I liked the mm. like how it sounded. And then, you know, that comes with like you're listening to the whole song, you, you gotta deal with the screaming. So then you just you just learn to like it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> See, I liked uh both aspects of it. Yeah, I liked how he could, uh, how Danny, it was Danny Warsnop. I think yeah. he's he's still, yeah, he's still singing for the band. He came back because I remember me and you had a conversation about that. Yeah, dude, fucking. He I left in the he <laughs> left. I think he uh, did some vocals for Beartooth or something, and then came back. Wait, I didn't I didn't know that he did vocals for Beartooth. It was either him or Caleb Shomo. It, it might it might be Caleb Shomo because of. Uh, because Caleb Shomo used to be a part of Attack Attack. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it is Caleb. Uh, Caleb, Caleb Shomo. Shomo. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I remember hearing something about, uh, you know, Barry Tooth's lead singer was uh, from Attack Attack. And, dude, back in the day, Attack Attack used to be my shit. Like, <laughs> now that I go back and listen to it, I, I cringe out a little bit. But it also kind of brings me back to that certain point in time. So we're like, oh yeah. So like singing wise, was it because I I haven't heard much of Attack on Attack or Attack Attack? Um, how was the comparison between the bands? You know what I mean? Uh, They got completely different sounds. Uh, yeah. Attack Attack back back in the day, they started out their favorite. No, their favorite. Their uh, best most known song is uh, Stick Stickly. Stick Stickly. Yeah. Okay, okay. They, they invented a that. genre named Crabcore. Crabcore. Crabcore, yeah. This was like 2006, bro. <laughs> yeah, damn, okay, okay. And there were just a bunch of teenagers with fucking emo haircuts. Like, yeah. The, but... the reason it was called Crabcore is because the guy would, one of the guitarists would, like, go down into a crab, like, position and start playing guitar. I see, okay, I see what you mean. And then... Damn, so that, that's where that, that came from, the whole... Are you t- you're talking about, like, laying on your back, right? No, he'd, like, he'd like stand in position. And... Uh, like like a, a bass stance? You know how basses get yeah, pretty yeah. fucking low? See, I'll, I'll look it up, Crab. Like this i don't know if you can really see that oh my but god yeah just look at, that, <laughs> yeah, well, look at yeah. the hair dude yeah man that's 2006 all the fucking way man I, i'd imagine playing guitar like that is very fucking hard well then again it was mainly just chugs yeah yeah so, valid. uh and then attack attack went from doing like the whole screaming thing to go in to they would still scream but then they would also uh they would also like do some like techno uh not techno shit yeah it would be some techno uh like auto-tune voice shit but they somehow made it work okay okay it didn't sound like complete shit but it it did but it also didn't it it was a perfect kind of blend you know what i'm saying yeah, I'm definitely, you know what, I'm definitely, I might just check them out after this, you know. And they have a new song out, but. A tap? Yeah. Okay. Since um, they stopped playing music in like 2012, I think. Ooh. And then they just came back without Caleb Shomo, and everybody hated it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't going for it. I I listened to it because I was hyped because you know it was a childhood band so I was kind of hyped yeah. for it but they uh eh, you weren't into eh, it I it's it's a like it's a slippery slope if I'm if I'm there for it it depends on the day okay okay type of thing all right I'm taking out what you're putting down so uh when we had when we had our first interaction what was your first impression truthfully it was like uh like honestly 
Don't yeah, yeah, cut yeah. no bullshit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna keep it hundred. I'm gonna keep it hundred. Tristan, I was like, damn, he's kind of loud, you know, like he, um, well, yeah, yeah. You're, you're like a, a very, um, like, like passionate person when you're, you're it speaking. depends on what I'm talking about. Exactly. And we were talking about bands. So you were, so, uh, like, it. and, uh, you know, and that's what, as I'm sure everyone noticed, like, that's what the, we, we learned to love about you. You know what I mean? Cause you, uh, you, you just bring the hype. Cause but, um, if, well, okay. Continue. Yeah, I was want to be the guy that cuts people off, but <laughs> you're good, you're good. Um, because you know, like I was, I was a big pothead. Um, throughout all of I'm high catching school. up to you. <laughs> Are you man? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I was a big pothead, and it was like, you know, I was chill. I, I was just chilled out all the time. So then when I met you, I was like, yeah, I was like, damn, you know, like calm it down, tight. man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was tight. You know, uh, it wasn't a bad um first impression but it was definitely a um a memorable Different. one yeah yeah so uh with the amount of time we've known each other with like how we went in wood shop and all that other shit and i ended up finishing that table really yeah you got a picture of it i'd love to see that yeah uh i put it on my instagram a while ago okay let, I'm, let i bet i might have seen it you know what he did with my fucking chair uh, my, my, he, it's uh it's in the back still unfinished really from, from what i know it's still in the back unfinished yeah damn see here's the issue with that chair right okay that dude like unloaded it on me and i you know i was i was okay to ha- hype to do it i guess but um but yeah that shit was unloaded on me and then we just there's a lot of complications with it since you only had a certain amount of time left, too. Yeah, I had so, one year to do that shit. I, I'm trying to... This is on Instagram, so I'm trying to... Jesus Christ. No, I'm seeing Turn I'm down seeing. that brightness. Damn, you got the uh, you got the glass in there and shit, too? Yeah. Where is it now? You still have it? It's at my grandparents' house. Nice, nice. I made it for my brother so he could put my mom's urn on it, but... Uh, I haven't been able to take it to him yet. Yeah. So it's being stored at their house. Nice, man. That's tight. So, and uh, I actually interviewed someone uh, about woodworking a few podcasts back too. And what he uh he he was in wood shop with us or he does no he uh so I went on a field trip with them to make okay. a like a end table. Oh, okay, I, uh, and he was the host of the fucking field trip, and then oh, we, just, nice. we just talked about wrestling and wood shop and like fucking music, wrestling, wrestling, <laughs> I like it, I like you know, it. shit like that. And, yeah, recently I've been getting a, a little into wrestling, a little bit of everything. Uh, because me and my roommates go to the this gym called uh, Big Scary Gym, and it's, it's a fighting gym. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yeah, so I've been trying to get into that. It's pretty tight. And uh, do you have, for the amount of time we've known each other yeah. and uh, for the amount of interactions we've had, do you have any favorite stories about just like us doing dumb shit? You know, it was, it was is there anything that comes to mind? I, I remember um, it was either you or me who did something really stupid in Woodshop. It was probably and- me. Let's be honest here. Uh, I think we both had a fair share. I, um, you know how Castillo would call everyone over like once you're fucking up, you know, (laughs) (laughs) put you on blast. Yeah, I'll be like, oh fuck, here we go. (laughs) For me, um, I remember the one time I I ran a my fucking like side rails through the the planer like fucking six times because (laughs) this was not you know it wasn't working. Yeah, and I guess that was an issue, so he called everyone over. But um, for you, I think he uh, or you fucking. I did a lot of things. I fucked up. So it was something times. with the miter saw. It was something with oh, the miter yeah, saw. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was uh, I had the big ass plank of wood, and then it yeah. got stuck, and then I was like, "Fuck!" And then he he got he was like, "Everybody, <laughs> yeah, everyone get over here!" I was uh, like, "Fuck!" Uh, and then he was he was just looking at me like, "Really?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So asking you know, like, so what'd you do wrong, Seth? 
it got it got stuck in the cut. <laughs> yeah, you like you like stopped the whole fucking blade. It, it was just it went whoop, whoop, and then it just like the stop the blade completely stopped. Uh, so he was like, "Oh fuck!" I was like, "What do I do now?" He was like, "Just stop the cut, take it out, yeah. and do it again." Yeah, fucking Castillo, man. But yeah, um, I don't know. Me and you would just fuck around a lot. I remember, uh, yeah, it was just you know. Oh shit! Actually, yeah, we remember all this went fucking went slaps in the, in the back of uh oh yeah where the wood is stored yeah 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 yeah, yeah. had a whole fucking little fight club back there yeah yeah so that was pretty tight and so anything else or just is would that be it yeah I want to say I want to say that'd be it because like I said we had a lot of just we were just fucking around constantly yeah we. Come on, yeah. that's what that's all I am. <laughs> like, yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what, you know. I just it's funny how I'm a podcast host, but I can barely hold on a conversation depending on the person. <laughs> Dude, it'd be like that. I'm telling you, I mean, I've I hate having a backpack conversation. That shit. Like I'd be like this. I'd just be like, hi, how you doing? And then that's as far as it goes. Yeah, short and sweet. That's as far as it goes. I'm just like, hey, how are you? And then if they respond expecting me to just, you know, backpack the entire conversation. I'm like, this shit don't work. Nah, man. I can't do it, man. Yeah, man. That's how, bro. That's how it be when you be like, like texting women. Like that shit. That man. happens a lot too. Yeah, it's like, fuck, dude. I'm out here. I'm out here struggling. I'm just like, bro, just come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put in some fucking effort. That's, I'll, I'll use I'm, just, call I'm it. just trying to be like, yo, how you doing? I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, be friendly and nice. Yeah, exactly. But, and like respectful. I don't want to be a dick, be like, show me your titties. You know, yeah, like, because yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, nah, that's, that's a real douchebag thing to do. Yeah, I would, man, I don't think I've ever just outright texted someone, let me see your titties. <laughs> We'd have I've, to be... I've never done that either. I was just saying for an example. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> like, you expect someone that looks like me to do that shit? No. Uh, no that's a <laughs> trick, man. You're a fly guy. <laughs> He's a fly guy. Don't do that. Uh, but, yeah, I don't fucking do that shit. That was just an example of something a yeah, douchebag yeah, yeah. would do. <laughs> oh, 100%. 100%. So, uh, what's your favorite Architects album? Since uh, you, you're the one that introduced me to that band. It was like 11th, I was in 11th grade. Have you, okay. I'm not familiar with the, al- it's their newest album. So I'm gonna look that up. Have it's, you heard their, their newest album? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My favorite song off of it's Animals. Uh, see, I wasn't a big fan of Animals. The it was album right. is called For Those That Wish to Exist. There it is. There it is. Either, yeah, I, either Black Lungs or Animals is one of my favorites off of that album. Actually, hold on, hold on. Oh, okay. It's the album Holy Hell. Mm-hmm. Uh, the song Hereafter. Um, See, I like Black Lungs, too, but uh, I don't know. I, I didn't like the direction they went with on um, Animals. Yeah, it kind of reminded me of, like, Bring Me the Horizon. Then again, I kind of, I love Bring Me the Horizon. They're a childhood band of mine, so I kind of, I'm down for whatever they do. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. So, hell, I got a Bring Me the Horizon poster hanging up right here, dude. <laughs> Have you, have you heard their new shit, brother? They, they low key going pop. Yeah, it's kind of. Uh, I like it. You know what I mean? It, yeah, uh, they the best song off of their new album is King Slayer, with Baby Metal. I haven't haven't heard that, dude. Oh my god, it's it just it's so good. And uh, Baby Metal is a Japanese metal band. It's a bunch of Japanese girls, and they go hard. Oh, women. Yeah, they go hard man okay okay their their best song and i think is distortion that song's heavy as fuck dude yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna play it real quick (laughs) 
I have heard this. I have heard this. Baby metal. Yeah, my uh, my friend showed me them, and uh, wow, like yeah, <laughs> wow, that is not bad at all. I know, right? <laughs> That's actually pretty good. Yeah, well, then again, I, when it comes to like metal music, I'm open to everything. Yeah. Unless it's like, you know, um uh let me think of a shitty subgenre real quick. Uh crunk music. Unless it's like something like that from the early two thousands that's just garbage, <laughs> you know. Okay, okay. I, I won't fuck with it, but I'm pretty open when it comes to that type of like alternative music. Yeah. Uh, oh, have you heard of um to... oh, oh, my okay, okay um like like any new bands are you listening to any new bands right now uh fuck let me let me go on my spotify real quick yeah do you think do you think um like have you heard of uh knocked loose i'm sure you have yeah knocked loose i've, I've heard, I've heard a few of their songs but i've never um I've never really gotten super, super deep dive into them like I have okay. within mice of mice and men. And uh Yeah, I was very I was very vague with the mice and men. And Kill Switch and Gage's new album is fucking tight. I didn't know they were they're still making music. And uh Howard Jones, who used to lead who used to be the lead singer for uh Kill Switch and Gage. Yeah. He has a band named Light the Torch, and they have a new album out called uh for those who wish me dead dude howard jones Good. can fucking like he can kill it no matter what he does some people just gotta like that man because he used to when he was a kid he used to be a um he like took opera classes so he can both scream and sing like nobody's fucking business <sighs> yeah man i I think a lot of them, I don't know if a lot of them get vocal teaching, but I feel like a lot of them do. Yeah. Just like a, a basis. Like I, man, cause I, I want to be able to sing and shit. So I wish I took a uh, choir in high school and I actually had choir, but I had a, uh, it's like, ah, fuck it. Why am I, why am I in this class? <laughs> yeah, No, I didn't want to be in it. I was, I was so nervous. So I had Mr. Uh, Castillo come pull me out, you know? Mm -hmm. You're give just like, give me out a sing back. song, will you? Like, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's yeah, that's funny. That's what he would say. And uh, triv, uh, you know, trivium, right? Trivium, yeah, with Matt Heafy. Uh, he, he, and this one uh, YouTube guitarist named Jared Dines, they have an album out called Dines X Heafy, bro. It's fucking, it's killer. insane, it's it's killer. And okay. Trivium have a new song out too. Damn, and see, I, I didn't li listen to much of Trivium. I, I had like one song in my uh, playlist by him. And uh, I've been listening, I've been going back and listening to a lot of Seven Dust and uh, like a lot of punk music. And, okay, okay. And just like early Breaking Benjamin, like 2005 Breaking Benjamin and shit like that. Okay, okay, I see what I see where you're, you're headed. And I've been listening to a lot of like film scores, like like uh, like the dude who does the the music for the Saw series, or um, like say like the Halloween theme music and like shit like okay, that. Okay, okay. It seems very unorthodox coming from a guy like me. Yeah, but, but like I remember you were always into like horror movies and shit. I'm gonna go so. to college to learn how to write horror films. There you go, bro. I, I so, definitely see you doing it too. So like I love listening to like the um like the Friday the 13th theme or like the Halloween theme and like just the score parts of the films because they're just so fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> and they're easy to study to. If you need something to, like to study for. Okay. That's the music you can put on in the background and it'll just fucking help because there's no okay. words to get you sidetracked. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so do you plan on, uh, I know you said you plan on um, like becoming a writer and going to college to, to write movie scripts, right? Um, I, I remember you saying something like you wanted to like make music, right? Yeah, I've been trying. 
what I've been what I've been doing with that is that's kind of on the back burner. It's not. It's still an option. Like I write songs from time to time, and I'll I'll do it here and there, but it's not like a number one priority right now. Okay, okay, I see what you mean. A little, that, little side that'll hustle. Be, that'll yeah. So what that, kind of music you plan on making? I I plan on making some like not early bring the horizon stuff but like say some 2013 okay which was uh separaternal which is arguably their best album okay like, okay I, I, I try, I i'm trying to go for either that or tr- just trivia okay okay since both of those dudes are fucking cool as fuck so yeah or like even i'll try to even go for early slipknot Oh, I fucks with that. Because Corey Taylor's the fucking man. Oh, 100%. But, dude, I like the vocal strain on that type of music. I, I, I feel like, you know, a lot of them can only do it for so long before. Uh, Hell, Ollie Sykes, the lead singer of Bring With The Horizon, he's had, he had like four surgery. vocal surgeries. Yeah, man. So, yeah, I don't know. That, that's but, probably why they're going more, like, more pop, you know. To rest his voice. Yeah, because... Hey. And from what I heard, Corey Taylor has had none. Even though on Iowa, which was their second album, he had the most unsafe, dangerous scream you could have. Because he just used straight vocal cords. He just used like straight throat and Ugh! like he yeah. didn't go, he didn't do the techniques that you're supposed yeah, to. Yeah, like with the, the whole diaphragm. And... Yeah, he just went yeah. straight throat, like, ah, like, you know. Yeah. Hey, Terry. Yeah. Is vocals steaming yet? I haven't seen waffles. So, what's your uh? We we already talked about bringing the horizon. So, what's your favorites favorites? Uh, Memphis May Fire album. My favorite album is Challenger. Memphis May Fire, man, I haven't listened to them in so long. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and look at. Pick that one up too. Challenger, you said? Yeah, Challenger's a fucking really good album. Or the album before that. See, I I like their softer shit, you know. So um I don't know, like Broken was pretty good. Uh yeah, I I'm gonna go with Broken, honestly. Challenger was a good album too, actually. Now I'm looking at yeah, the cover art for that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, because like I said, I, I've always been like a sucker for their like their softer music, mm-hmm. their, their sadder, you know. That just resonates with you more? Yeah, yeah. Because like I said, even when I first started listening to like metalcore music, it was like uh, for the soft vocals. And then I... Instead I, of the screams. Yeah, yeah. So then I started to like, you know, I just adapt to, uh, you know... Speaking of like, have you heard of Wage War? You listen to Wage War at all? Uh, here and there. Okay, like, okay. I've never done a huge deep dive into them. Okay, okay. Like so, with my music that I listen to, I I go through phases where I'm all about this one band or all of, or like I'm just all over the place. I felt I'm that. Ne- I felt that. I'm never like you know set in one yeah. place for a certain amount of time. Like I'll I'll go to listening to Jimi Hendrix for like six weeks straight to stevie ray vaughn to like fucking uh film scores to the heaviest um cannibal corpse you can think of to rancid to operation ivy like all i bounce all over the place yeah my my dad would fuck with you 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 like Jimi hendrix he's greatest guitarist of all time there you go okay yeah my dad my dad would fuck with you for sure and Stevie Ray Vaughan is a fucking childhood prodigy. Well, he was, he is a guitar prodigy. Same with like Chuck Berry and like, you know, people like that. Yeah, my dad be, yeah, he'd be trying to, like, he'll send me music, you know, and he's like, like, listen to like these, these certain bands, you know, or uh, artists. It's like, if you, if you want to play guitar, you got to, you know, really listen you got to appreciate guys. the roots. Exactly, exactly. So, because all metal music comes from blues. If you can play, like blues music say like a stevie ray vaughn or a uh or otis redding or like a 
just like blues music in general fuck yeah. even johnny cash okay if can, okay if you can list if you can play blues music you can play any any song on the on the guitar because everything derives from the blues that's how that's how metal was created and like the whole whole deal everything started yeah. with blues music hey have you thought about being uh like a music like a like a reaction reactions i've thought about it but i just look at the people in the scene and i uh, not into it yeah you can do it man you can you can do it you're pretty educated in that uh that manner it, that's that's because all i do is sit around and listen to music <laughs> okay okay and like i when i'm interested in something i fucking go all in yeah so i don't i don't like go lackluster in the shit like you even listen to the um the podcast i did yesterday i impressed that motherfucker with the questions i had yeah because yeah like and if I, there's something i need to do i'll go all in and i'll go into yeah. deep vibes and shit yeah okay okay and don't, don't take this the wrong way when i say it you seem a lot more educated from the last time we talked i mean i did graduate high school so yeah well, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah yeah but uh yeah just educated you know what i mean just um like smarter you know what i mean yeah yeah it's like you know what you're talking about you know you should because like uh words i i i think more now since i'm an adult yeah i don't i don't have that childhood mentality of being a 17 year old of i don't give a fuck i have no consequences to now if i do something I'm going to go to jail. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I don't want that uh, to happen. <laughs> so, yeah, so I think more rationally yeah. about what my decisions are going to be or, you know, stuff like that. That's good. That's tight, bro. So I put more thought into it than I would normally. So how did you get into tattooing? So um, it's a, it's a funny story. So, I would come out here to Vegas and visit my homie David. And, um, you know, it was like, we were always just talking because he's all tatted up, you know what I mean? So I was like, yeah. always fascinated with his tattoos. I think I met him in like eighth grade. And like yeah, he yeah. signed something for me. Yeah, no, the, okay. Yeah, I remember, uh, yeah, he would come to the school and shit. I didn't even talk like, to him when he was Dude, he, was he, there. Si he signed a hat and a t shirt for me. Oh, nice, nice. And I was like, I, I would, yeah, I was like starstruck, dude. I was like, oh, shit. Here we yes. go. <laughs> yeah, that's how it was uh, when I first met him too. That's who I'm living with right now, actually. That's tight. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, yeah. So pretty much, he was all tatted up, you know. And then I would come out here and visit him because me and him met on uh, like video games. We'd play video games together all the time. Mm -hmm. So uh, he needed me to bring his car from Cali to Vegas, so I brought it for him, and we were just chilling, you know. And I ended up loving Vegas, man. I was like, yo, this, like, Vegas is fucking tight. So then I, I just didn't want to leave, you know what I mean? So the one night I got this tattoo, um, it looks pretty fucking, it looks like a silhouette on this, but um, it's essentially uh, the skeleton of Atlas, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, I was just like, fuck it. Like, I want a tattoo, you know? I just turned 19. Um so me and my homie Max were supposed to go get tattoos and we just walked into a tattoo shop, you know, um, told him what I wanted. And actually he was supposed to get this tattoo, but they didn't have time for it. So, so yeah. Did he ever like, end up getting the tattoo? No, because uh, if you know my, my homie Max, he does not sit well when you like tattooing him, like he, he moves, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So he has a low tattooing is a very still process from, yeah, what, yeah. from what I know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you can't be, you can't be moving. You know what I mean? Because you just or you'll fuck, fuck up. up the artist had like, exactly. You know. So yeah, he was. Um, it was like I said, it was just an impulse decision. It was like it, it. I it was like two days of thinking about it, what I wanted, and then I just went and fucking got it. And um, ever since then, they're, they're addicting, man. Like that's like the one. there's this one tattoo. Uh, uh, it's not a myth because it's true yeah uh, six month curse yeah yeah where when you get your first tattoo within six months you're gonna get another one facts it's facts dude i got 
I've only lived out here for uh, six months and I've already got four tattoos, you know. See, victim was so. a six month curse. Yeah, yeah. And um, now I'm looking for another one. Like I said, I want to get, I have an owl that I tattooed on my thigh. Here, I'll pull up a picture of it. Um, and it's cool or whatever, but like, I just want, I, I want a realistic owl with uh, antlers on my thigh. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> But I also give out uh, free tattoos. So I've been looking for like people to let me tattoo them out here. And I've, I've done about like 10, 10 tattoos. I, I've seen I've seen a couple of them. So turn your brightness down a little bit. Or oh, yeah, there you go. So that's that what's cool. Yeah, it's all right. The eyes are beat up. You know, I I, I fucked up a lot on the eyes. Um, I mean, I would assume it's very difficult trying to tattoo yourself. You know. Yeah, they won't even show. It, it's actually not too bad. It just depends on like your your pain tolerance to it. And I think I have a pretty high pain tolerance when it comes to like tattooing or like I guess needles. Because so, aren't some areas worse than other others? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, like your upper thigh hurts a lot more. Uh, like the bottom your ribs the and knee. hips fucking are. Oh killer. fuck yeah, fuck yeah, dude! I've actually tattooed someone's ribs and. Uh, yeah, it's like he he was sitting fine, you know what I mean? He he wasn't moving, it's just his body like was twitching, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's be- that's just how his yeah, body exactly. was reacting to the tattoo. And I know it wasn't him cuz like he can't help that. So it know? wasn't his fault. No, not at all. So But yeah, I definitely plan on getting more. I actually got quoted like cuz I want to get this covered up. And the dude quoted me like four grand to get that covered up. And Fuck, dude. Tattoos are fucking expensive. <laughs> yeah, if you go with a good artist, but I'm not doing that. Fuck that. I'm not gonna spend four grand on a fucking tattoo. See what I since um my dad back in the day, he used to be a tattoo artist where he'd like tattoo people in the garage. Since he he's a mechanic, but like yeah. he would do tattooing as a side hustle and he would like tattoo people in the in the garage. So I kind of grew up around hearing the noises of a tattoo gun yeah. and watching him tattoo people. I watched him tattoo both of my brothers when they were 16. Damn, okay, okay. So so why uh, didn't you get a tattoo at 16? Well, uh, carry he, on the, he's, the tradition. He's, sh- he's shaky now. His hands oh, okay, are shaky okay. and he's getting older. So he doesn't want to have my first tattoo be all fucked up. Okay, okay. Well, so, uh, like truthfully, bro, like, like the stupid tattoos are are the best ones or the better ones. You know what I mean? Um, you know, because you look at them, you look at them in like ten years from now. You know, you can be like, oh, that was tight. You know, and then the, they bring back a funny story. story. Exactly, exactly. Like, um, like I said, when I first tattooed myself, I tattooed a little sword. Mm-hmm. And was, well, a sword with a koi fish. My homie, oh, you know Sebastian. Sebastian was a yeah. big help with that sword. Uh, he, he did most of it but um you know i look at that sword i'm never gonna get that thing covered up like the sword is fucking tight and because it just it holds a meaning that exactly exactly is deeper than all the other shit yeah exactly and the, you know these are cool the ones on my arms are cool but, but like like i said so um i say let your dad do it bro if your dad still has the gun he, he the thing is he doesn't and oh, okay, he never okay. has the fucking time because he's working all the time i see i see so it's like a time issue. And yeah. since I are, I've had plans for this arm, this entire arm going down to my fucking hand since nice, I was nice. like 14 years old. I, what, I've uh, had, what's the plan for it? You know what you want? Yeah, yeah. it's going to be like a family tree arm thing. Bro, that's that's beautiful. I like that. S- since you know how my mom died yeah, and yeah. all that, I'm going to get a angel I was gonna get her face, like a portrait of her. Yeah, but those can be fucked up easily. Yeah, I yeah. Want her forehead to be like, you know. Yeah, exactly. Higher upper shoulder. So I just want an angel with the date she was born, the date she died, below it, and then that connects to a family tree. Like, the bottom of that uh, death date will spiral out a family, t- like some tree branches. Nice. That will go wrap around all the way my arm. And then the tree branches will go out and they'll there'll be names of the people of, in my family, like my brothers, my grandma, nice. you know, my dad. And then it'll just and then the uh the branches will 
extend to my hand and finish at my fingers. Nice, dude. I like that. I like that a lot. So it's going to be like when, when I think of sleeve, you know what I mean? It's like fully fucking covered. Mm. Uh, so you're obviously going to have some skin showing, right? Like it's going to be a... I'm, I'm going to try to get it fully covered. Okay. It's like a... Since it's a, it's a tree. So I just want to... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you I'm can gonna, play with that. I'm going to throw around ideas and see what would be the best one. Nice, nice. And do you have like a, a like a, a budget... You know what I mean? A budget in mind for this. Um, and also like... Uh, when I can afford it. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, because they are expensive, man. And like, yeah, just uh, like go with a good artist. And especially in California, dude, there's a lot of good artists out there. So um, yeah, go with a good artist. And um, yeah, don't spare no expense for it because it's on you for life. And my plans are uh, to not get any tattoos now because, you know, I'm kind of small. So what I'm going to do I'm um, small too, man, is uh, and like I plan on getting bigger and like going to the gym every day and wrestling for a college and nice. like doing jujitsu and just getting as big as I can for professional wrestling. So because, you know, the land of the Giants, fucking yeah, yeah. six foot five, 250 pounds. Yep. Yep. So I I'm only six foot one, 180. I need to you know bulk up. Yeah. Yeah. You'll get there. So that's why I don't want to get a tattoo now and then my arm grows and gets bigger from like muscle mass and yeah, yeah. The, the tattoo looks fucked. See, I, I asked my tattoo artist about that because that's my plan as well. Not I, I just want to like get cut up, you know, get bigger. Mm -hmm. And I have been doing that. But um, like I was asking, like, you know, how's it going to look? Let's say I get all fucking yoked up and, you know, uh, he was pretty much just saying the tattoos are going to look smaller but um, not disformed because uh, I forgot how we explain it. Like something about like your skin, like, like where the ink's at, the ink's going to stay there, if that makes sense. And like your skin expanding. Yeah. Yeah. So it's um, yeah. I don't know. Um, he just said it's going to look smaller. You know what I mean? As mm. you, you get bigger, the, the tattoo is going to stay the same size and your skin is just going to expand around that i mean i don't plan on being like fucking like so yoked to the point <laughs> of uh like those world's strongest men that are like you see those fuckers that are lifting up uh, yeah like boulders and shit yeah, i do not plan crazy. on that i don't plan on that I'm, yeah. i plan on getting like say a typical wrestler size i have nice, like, nice normal not hulk hogan 24 inch pythons because hulk hogan's a piece of shit but you don't like Hulk Hogan? He's he's a racist cunt. He, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, like you know, uh, he he was he used to be cool, and All then right. he turned out to be a racist piece of shit. So All right. it's I kind of kind of don't kind of don't fuck with that. Okay. Okay. I mean, I, I used it. to love him back in the NWO, but yeah, no. All right. All right. It's so kind of a moral on. standard type thing. Fuck Hulk Hogan. You heard it first. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, like I said on the last podcast, dude, I don't burn bridges. I blow them up. I like it. I like that. Because if I blow up the bridge, I'm never going back. Yeah, yeah. There's no fucking bridge there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, so I've been... Um, so have you have you been, like, working out and shit? Yeah. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Nice. Yeah, I wish I... Bro, because... It, like senior year, like I said, because I was I was so small throughout high school, dude. And um now I'm finally like like I'm getting I'm getting up there, you know what I mean, size and shit. Mm. And I never realized how important like diet is, you know, because I've been working out for like almost a year. And because if you don't have a are, diet, like it'll fuck everything up. You can't out train a bad diet. Dude, that's what I'm okay. See, and I'm just now fucking learning that. So Luckily, you know, I, I found that out back in 2018 when I talked yeah, man, to the I, dude that I had on the podcast yesterday. I contacted him back in 2018 and asked him about it because I was going to start weight training. So yeah. I asked him how to like what reps are and all that other shit. So he fucking educated me on that. Yeah, man. And yeah, I feel like more people like especially like if you're trying to get into uh, working out, uh, just need to be educated on the whole diet aspect of things. Because I'm just now like. 
like I said, because I was working out for a year and the gains were like minimal. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They were they were decent, but I was eating like complete shit. You know, like you can't be bench pressing and eating chips on the couch. You know what I no, mean? Exactly, exactly. And for me, it was fast food, dude. I was going fucking fast food. Would fuck you up, like yeah. Real quick. It's that's cr- and it's crazy. So that shit works. Everything within moderation. Yep. Yep. And um. Yeah, that, that's what I was gonna tell you. You know what I mean? Because I, I didn't know how far you were into the whole like uh, like fitness aspect of things, but you're actually very educated in it. So, yeah, it's because it, I talked like, to like, many people, and I have, and my brother's a vegan bodybuilder, and he fucking yeah. talks to me about stuff. And so, next question is, um, let's just talk about our favorite artists, man. Ah, all right. Uh, you heard of movements, band movements? No, I'm talking about tattoo artists. Oh fuck. Okay, my. <laughs> um, there's this one dude named uh Acosto Acosto Tattoos, and he's in uh I think Singapore. And man, this dude's artwork is fucking incredible. Like, he does color artwork, and uh, I'll pull up some work while I'm talking about it. But his shit is it's uh realism. But the color on it just stands out like, man. Uh, So, you know, it's. uh, That looks really cool. From what I can see, that looks dope. Yeah, and it's man, he's just like color wise, uh, you know. I'm trying to, is, yeah, I can see it. it. Okay, okay, it looks really dope. Yeah, man, he so. just makes the colors pop. Yeah, and it's all he knows how to manipulate his skin to make the colors pop. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. And it's like, it's like realism too, you know, like, yeah. I love the color. Like, I, I want red, like red colored tattoos. I love how that shit looks. So if I were to get like a colored tattoo, I'd definitely go to him. I would definitely spend four grand on a fucking, a nice little forearm tattoo from him. And uh, so I would say if I had to put together a top five of my favorite tattoo artists of all time, Joey Capabianco, okay. Paul Booth. Paul Booth is a fucking legend. Paul Booth. I, uh, yep, yep. And um, Flacco Martinez and shit, I'm on the spot. I can't. Veronica Day. Okay, okay. And I think I can only go to four right now. You're good. You're good. Be, or, uh, Nico Maranto, I think his name is. He he did some. He covered up the rocks tattoo, and he's got some pretty cool artwork. Okay, okay. So. Um, there's my five <laughs> yeah that's tight that's tight so do you plan on uh going going to these guys when you uh plan on getting tattooed any of them wait when i have the money fuck yes okay okay because they're big name people and they you know yeah that shit adds up so yeah I'll um just... yeah lawyer lawyer marie's pretty good too uh the girl who won Ink Masters, I think the most drinks in Ink Masters. Yeah. yeah. And Oliver Peck's really cool too. Oliver Peck, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I know him from Ink Master, but I've been looking into like his stuff, and it's pretty, pretty dope. It's pretty dope. Okay, okay. Yeah, I always wondered like on Ink Masters, like, uh, what's the dude from Jane's Addiction? Uh, Dave Navarro. Dave Navarro. I'm like. I don't know. I don't know what, what, why he's able to critique people who tattoos when he doesn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. Himself. He just gets them, you know. And... I think it's just because, like, he's tatted up. Yeah, yeah. And he, he's like, oh, he's a guitarist. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get, you know, for yeah. the, um, like, publicity aspect of, like, why they would put him on the show. But, like, tattooing's fucking hard, like, and I, I feel like you don't realize that until you actually fucking start trying it, because it's really fucking hard. So, uh, I don't know if he if he's in the right position to, like, be critiquing people. And being like, this tattoo, tattoo. T- this tattoo looks like shit. Yeah, yeah, like, like you can you say know. it looks like shit, but it's like, I don't know, don't critique me if you can't 
do better or you know do just yeah. as good so if you can't match my work don't critique exactly exactly so that's why like with uh oliver peck and um chris nunez. Other, chris nunez yeah that's why like you know i i will value their opinion over uh dave navarro yeah, dave navarro's yep because they actually you know what i mean they have the work to back it up they have mm. uh like they have the experience exactly exactly the ideas of and they know what goes into actually doing a tattoo yeah yeah exactly like they can accurately um critique your ability opposed to dave navarro uh, who just like i don't look against dave navarro but yeah yeah, he's cool he's He's doing like exactly exactly because yeah. I don't want it to be if I ever meet the guy, he this somehow stumbles across his timeline and he's like, you know, fuck you too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, Dave Navarro, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> now he's Freedom he's cool, speech, you man. Know what I mean? Yeah, he's he's cool. You know what I mean? Like, I, it's not like I, like fuck the dude, but yeah, you know, just it's not like a Hulk Hogan ass. situation where he's an yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> fuck Hulk Hogan, man. Yeah. But um, for, like, my tattoos, what I want to do is the only places I plan on not getting tattooed are my face, the bottoms of my feet and hands. Okay. And, you know, obvious areas, like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twig and berries. Yeah. No, yeah. Nothing <laughs> nothing around there. But I do, I do plan on getting a tattoo on my right ass cheek, though. Really? You know, yeah. You know what of? Because my mom, when she when uh, she was alive, she yeah. used to like give give us some good whoopings with like wooden mm. spoon. Shit. There's this one time, she had a Kool Aid spoon, right, with the Kool Aid man's like smiling face on it. Oh no! She she broke it over my ass, right? And it it left a mark for like oh, maybe no. two weeks. Is that so, what you're gonna get tattooed? Yes, that's what I'm gonna get tattooed. Dude, that's I'm gonna get the Kool- awesome. I'm gonna get the Kool-Aid man's face to make it look like I just got beat with a Kool-Aid man spoon. Man, that is on my right tight. ass cheek. And that's gonna man. be the only tattoo in that area. Yeah, yeah. But I think it'd be a you know a pretty funny piece. Oh fuck yeah, dude. And it's gonna mean a lot. You know, you're, yeah. you're gonna look at that. No one's gonna... ever gonna fucking see it. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> who <exactly>. cares? <laughs> Yeah, that was my thought when I started tattooing my thighs, and then I went to my low fucking thigh, and then now it's like fuck. So, do you plan on like touching your neck at all? Uh, I plan on like doing tattoos on my neck, but that's only if the whole wrestling that? thing like takes off. Okay. And I'm like, I don't have to say, you know, be like, oh fuck, and like work at McDonald's. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd See, like, oh yeah, the wrestling thing didn't work out. Fuck, what am I gonna do? I have I have neck tattoos. I can't get hired anywhere. Yeah. Or like you know. See, that was my like my thought too. With like, uh, why they haven't tattooed my like my forearms yet? Just make sure you can get tattooed in places. Just make sure you can cover it up. Yeah, yeah. That's why I I just touched my upper arms. But honestly, dude, with the way that like the world's moving today, people getting ta- people. Going to tattoos. work with fucking tattoos on their yeah, yeah. and shit. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I definitely want to touch my hand, but when I'm financially like I have that financial freedom to. You know yeah, what that's mean? what I'm saying. That's why. So um, same with I'm, I'm gonna touch my hands and my knuckles and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once I'm set, you know what I mean. I I, I have a good career. Um, you know, like I said, financial freedom, bro. I'm gonna fucking send it. I'm, I'm gonna get neck tattoos. Uh, probably I'm won't touch my not, face. Yeah. Obviously not, because that face tattoos are stupid. I don't see yeah, why people man. find them attractive. They're... I, I like, dude. Yeah, it, it's this fucking... man has a uh, ice cream cone on his face. What makes him? Yeah, an attractive shit. human being. Like, come on. Like, <sighs> like fuck. <laughs> like, this, I don't get that shit either, man. Like, touch your fucking face, like, you know, um, you're not cool. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's like it's it's just fucking stupid, you know. You're gonna how do you think or, you're or gonna the look one on the age? eyebrow, the whole fucking eyebrow tattoo, man? I think that shit is so fucking stupid. Yeah, it's really just anywhere on the face in general is dumb. Yeah, it's like I don't care what you put on your fucking face, it's gonna look stupid. You could yeah, man. because there's no be, way you're gonna yeah, be able to cover that up. Yeah, it's your fucking face. 
neck i can understand just wear like a wear like a hoodie or something yeah yeah even then it'll like it'll be fine yeah you can figure it out with the i would i would touch like high neck you know what i mean i'd go up here yeah up I'd, here shit, I'd like tattoo the ear. back of my ears and shit like yeah yeah, yeah but that's um, as far as i would go when it goes to like i don't know if that counts as face but i tattoo I that one area is. behind your ears yeah 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 that, you know? that's yeah. uh that's get a like a 31 or something 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 funny yeah i wanted to get like a a sword man some sword you know just something creeping down which would be tight but uh like i said man there's a lot of tattoos that i just i'm, I'm not gonna do yet just because i don't know what i'm doing uh career-wise you know and yeah. i don't know how that's gonna fuck with me and that's the smart thing to do yeah you gotta make sure you're financially set in order to start like, really once you have that financial freedom you can say, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to get these tattoos. Exactly. Like, exactly. Once you have fuck you money, you can get those tattoos. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I'm like, and I, I'm like kind of pissed. I got these ones, you know, cause um, like, I, I want to be an actor, dude. I want to be in like the entertainment industry. And I was talking with uh, this woman who is pretty like big in this shit, like deep in it. And she was saying uh, like, yeah, it, um, they're better off just going with people who don't have tattoos because because it's um, going to take longer for the makeup artists to exactly cover up the tattoos and then like uh outfit wise you know what i mean instead of buying one outfit for you they're going to need several outfits in case you get makeup on your fucking uh you know what i mean your clothes yeah. so i was you know and i look young so she was saying you know uh you could have played like like uh, like teenager parts or even kid parts you know but because you got a deep ass voice now so you can't uh, like it's okay back in high school you'd be like hey how you doing guys like yeah. <laughs> and I was, I was always telling my parents that dude like they should have got me into acting at like, but fucking... then again child actors seem from what i hear they have terrible childhoods yeah yeah like it's fucked up yeah yeah and, and that just kind of goes to show like uh like money don't make you happy and the mater- um, I think that's more on the parents part than the kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, because that, that's a lot of pressure to put on a fucking kid. On a fucking six-year-old? Yeah. Being like, oh, deliver fuck, this yeah. line or we can't pay rent. Like Exactly. You know? Like, you know, that's a lot to put on him. So, I, you know. The kid doesn't even know his, emo- his own emotions yet. Why the yeah, fuck exactly. are you going to put him through that? He's still trying to figure himself out. And, you know, he's got to, yeah. So... I don't know. It goes a long way with the whole, um, like you just get, I don't know. It, there's a certain age you should be able to act. You know what I mean? I get you need mm-hmm. kid actors, but, but fuck, they, they do be really fucked up growing up. Yeah. I mean, hell think of how many like kid actors that are chicks turn out to be porn stars. It's like a 57% rate. Yeah, man. It's, it's like, <laughs> like, <sighs> fuck, it's like man. fuck dude. Come on. Why do you have to do this to the kid? Women got it's probably off topic, dude, but women have a fucking cheat code to that shit, dude. If you're if you're decent looking in the slightest and you make an OnlyFans, man. Let's okay. I need to bring something up since you were talking about since you brought up OnlyFans. Okay. So you know how back in the day people used to girls used to be strippers in order to pay for college? Yeah. OnlyFans is the new way of becoming a stripper exactly exactly or, or they're porn stars they're wannabe porn stars is what they are yeah it's a it's a virtual fucking strip club oh shit the mic the mic boom i don't think i need that i i don't think you do either <laughs> yeah it's kind of pointless but you know spit guard the whole whole deal yeah yeah this is uh what we'd be recording off of because my roommate makes uh music it's actually really good so but yeah it's just you know think about it oh I, cheat code so i i got a meme um that i don't know if you've seen but uh <laughs> so you know how people are like oh stop sexualizing women and like that whole that whole deal right yeah uh i have a meme that's pretty fucking funny let me find it god damn it where is it all right. Uh, I'll I'll pull it up later. We'll we'll talk about other shit. 
Okay, okay. It, it's a Sponge it's a SpongeBob meme to where you remember that episode when he uh ripped his pants? Classic. So here is here's the meme. Oh fuck. I need to turn that brightness down. Oh no. Oh, Jesus. A little more up there. God damn it. All right, I see says, the photo. I know the photo. So go ahead it and says, read that's it. It says women stop sexualizing us. Also women. $9.99 a month to see my asshole. Dude. It's uh, it's like, come on, which know, one do you want? You like, exactly. You can't have it's both. Like, and it, I, I know it's very this like a controversial subject. I don't care. Hell, they do dude, it I am, I'm complete controversy anyway. <laughs> and that's what's that's what's gonna make it, man. That's what's gonna take you far. Because so. like I'm I, I would say I'm a nice guy and like, you know, I'm nice and chill and whatever. Say I've never been, I've never been a complete asshole. I can be, no, no. A, I can be a dick. Trust yeah. me. I can. Cause if I say I'm nice to people and I care about my friends and I care about their feelings and all that stuff and I help them out through shit. Yeah. So like they've given me the nickname of the counselor. So I like, cause I go I to like them that. and I'm like, yo, yeah. what do you, what do you need to get off your chest? I'll try to, I'll try to help you with it. And yeah, like, yeah. that's, that's what I do to people when I meet them. If we don't have like a common ground, I just try to help them through whatever. So. Yeah, but, that's tight, man. But, um, like I'm a inherently a nice guy and I care and whatever, but if, if I walk, I can give a fuck about your feelings, dude. Like just in general, like facts, I'm not talking about facts. you specifically, but no, like, no, I know what you mean. In general, I can give a fuck about your feelings, dude. I don't give, I don't care. Yeah, I really don't give a fuck. You can go fuck yourself. I don't care. Yeah, and I, it's like, I, I hate when people argue on like opinion based, uh, like subjects. Be like, are you? Is nobody allowed to have an opinion anymore? That's what I'm saying. Like, everyone's entitled to an opinion. It's like, yeah, we can say or fucking argue, but it's like, what good is that? The way I feel, you feel the way you feel. Let's just keep it at that. Yeah, like, what good is it going to do that we argue for thirty minutes over what cheeseburger is the best? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's all opinion. It'd be like, I like ketchup. I like mustard. Let's have a thirty minute argument. Yeah, (laughs) and that goes with like music too. Like, I hate arguing about music. It's like. I like what I like. You like what you like. Like you know, it's all. It's an opinion based sport. You know. It's yeah, just, it's an opinion based art form. Exactly. So you know, it's, yeah. The whole OnlyFans thing is like they got it. They got it pretty easy, man. Like I said, if you're the, all you need to do is have a decent pair of tits and you're fine. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, and you today, can buy a decent ass. pair of tits. <laughs> yeah. You could buy all of that for a certain amount of money and you'd be good. As long as your face doesn't look fucked, you're fine. Dude, it is crazy. Like a, a male trying to do that? Fuck like, no. Like, dude, uh-uh. You would, man, you would not get far with that. Fuck no. Because. You got to be, you know what I mean? You got you to gotta look fucking. You, you got to be shredded and you got to have a lot of self-confidence <laughs> exactly man you gotta you gotta have it like that too you know what i mean you, you can't be... be insecure like me exactly <laughs> like, i thought that i could never that. see myself doing something like that first of all it's stupid Fuck no. Fuck first of no. all it's stupid second of all um i'm gonna be a famous wrestler so i i'm just hoping one of these days and have your uh fuck I, I, that's <laughs> why that's why i'm not one of those people that send nudes to people i i is, is dumb if you want to see me naked um, come here like, yeah. <laughs> like you know what i mean come see it in person yeah, yeah come, come see let, let me put my dick on your forehead don't yeah. let me photograph it <laughs> yeah man um i've only sent one one oh. fucking, you know my face I, is not in it i did not put my face in it you know just the straight. penis does not photograph well it's, it's yeah it's not a very uh I, i'm like geez, this thing looks fucking you know it's not a pleasant photo it's not it's if not a very like it, guess, photographable you know. um yeah. uh, appendage no no it is not no it is not it is it is very shy <laughs> yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> and uh so yeah uh so you know with famous people how twitter <laughs> fucks everybody over yeah. and like they dig up something from their past and they're like yeah, oh man. you said this you're a piece of shit like, like yeah, you said this 15 years ago. Like, you know, be fuck like this guy, cancel him. 
Like, come on. What better uh, words? I'm going a little too fast here. Fuck. No, you're good, you're good. Uh, I've all right. Well, so, I feel like uh, you know, yeah, people grow. You know what I mean? Something you said fucking 15 years ago is honestly not going to be something you, you know, still think today. You know, like I said, say if you have grow. a Twitter account and you're like, say for example, a person like a childhood rapping star or something like that, right? And like they say something when they're like 13 years old. And then they they end up thirty like, and then they're they're fucking thirty three, and it's like several years later, and then it gets brought up, and they're like, "Who the fuck find like yeah, yeah. has the time?" Like you you set look. out to fuck me over, you know? What I mean, you like you have a problem with me clearly. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing, Dude, but you have a problem with it. Stalking my shit, you know, going back fucking so and so years. Can we fix it? Be yeah, like, come on, it. man. Like, Jesus Christ. Did you bring pizza? Yeah, there's some stuffed crust. Dude, can you bring me like two slices? <laughs> I was going to text you. Too. I was like, gonna... where the fuck? No, I was there going to text you. I got sidetracked. Fuck yeah. Nah, but, but yeah, that, that's uh, like, you know what I mean? What? There's two types of people in this world there's people that are looking to get offended and and the people that are look, the people that are yeah offend yeah 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 Yeah, that's very true that's very offenders and the and the offendees and that's why I feel like like with comedy comedy wise personally I subjective yeah and I love all the fucking I love the fucked up comedy like exactly like Joe Rogan and Dave Chappelle and like the shit yeah Bill Burr you know yeah the shit that'll make you go. It's like now it's like fuck, I don't know. I feel like a lot of them are just like holding back now because it's like everyone gets it's so fucking cancel culture. Offended. Everybody's soft nowadays. Dude, and it's fucking it's like it, it it's annoying as shit. Like like everyone gets so offended on shit that's appreciated, man. It's everyone gets so offended about things it's like I don't know. They're just looking to get offended, like you yeah, saying, you know? yeah. There's the two types of people in this world. The one that are gonna get offended and the ones that are looking to offend Mm -hmm. see i mean if you get offended by some if someone gets offended by something i say think about how soft you have to be as a human being you do not have a sense of humor you yeah you're gonna really let what i said ruin your fucking day because you know me uh, my sense of humor is really fucked up and i like to make jokes that make people think of how much of a piece of shit they are (laughs) As, you, as jokes should be, I mean. I mean, because you know my sense of humor. It's it's very f- fucked up, let's say, in words. That's the best sense of humor there is, though. So, um, I plan on writing a horror film as we go back to, segue back to, like, film and yeah, all yeah. that other shit. Uh, I plan on writing a horror movie. And once I write this horror movie, think about how much better my promos would be in wrestling. Since, like, depending on what it is, you have to, like, write your promos in order to have a structured outline or, like, something like that. Or you can just go off the cuff. But if I were to write down my promos, if I know how to do a feature-length film, think about how much better they would be. Very true. Very they would true. fucking if I can write some real fucked up shit. And your ability to like direct, you know. And I could like direct my own promos, like how Rob Zombie did with his music videos, except for it would be a lot better. Yeah. What Rob Zombie did back in the nineties. Okay, okay. If you you need some actors, man, let me know. Let me know. I, I got you, man. We can I, I can play whatever. Cause what I'm looking for is I'm looking to offend as many soft people as i can okay okay like i i want to and i'm going to bring religion into it because i want to make fun of people and i want to i want to okay, bring okay. certain situations to light and be like you know what fuck this fuck that all that other stuff so you don't believe in religion i i am non-religious i haven't been religious since i was 13 years old okay okay so, yeah, I, I was like that for a long time. So I just don't, I mean, I don't knock it or anything. I'm just yeah, like, yeah, yeah, cool, whatever. 
I don't bring anything to light. Yeah, I was because I don't want to be in a two hour conversation about oh you're going to hell. No, nah, you know? see, and that that's why like that's what turns like, me off. Because like I was saying, I was I was atheist for a long time, and I'm not even right now. I'm not even. Uh, I'm not. I don't know, bro. I, I'm I'm like confused. I guess agnostic, but uh, where agnostic. you believe there's something out there, but you don't know. Just, Exactly, you like believe there's a presence. Yeah, because um, and what did it for me, bro? Like I got in a really bad fucking uh car crash with my uh my friend, and we both, everyone involved, walked out like completely fine. And realistically, I feel like uh my my friend should be dead, and I should be really fucking hurt. That's fucked. Dude. But we walked out of it fine. So I don't know. That that was when it was kind of like the shift between like there is no God or there is no higher power to. Maybe it there's is, something out there. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know. It, it's a uh, confusing. Because, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm a religion guy, but because mm-hmm. I think what kind of fucked the whole religion thing up was my mom dying. Mm-hmm. And then once I got to about 13 years old to when I could de- develop my own thought and speak for myself, yeah. that's when I was like, I, I don't feel like standing up and sitting down in church every Sunday. Oh, fuck really? that. Fuck that. I mean, <laughs> like, like Bible humping fucking, uh, you know, Christians and Catholics, like shit like that. Fuck no. I'm not going to dedicate a, a day of my life to go fucking worship you, you know? It's just like, I mean, I have grandparents who are religious and all that stuff. And I, I, I just don't voice my opinion on it. I, yeah, yeah. Because I don't want to ruin their fun. Because I love mm-hmm. them, so I don't. I'm not like, oh, there is no God, there is no this, there is no whatever. Like I'll question it and have a really good conversation, but I won't be like, oh, I won't just be out front and be like, yo, there is no. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't knock what they're believing in. Because I love them, so I don't want to. Yeah, and it, it's like they're a bunch of sweet like... people, so I don't want to ruin their fun. And I feel like it's very like it's comforting, you know what I mean? It's like uh we don't like to think about when you know your friends or family dies that they're just fucking rotten in the ground. You like to think mm-hmm. that you know they're uh, that they're somewhere else. Exactly, living a, a better life than the the life they left behind. Mm-hmm. So um I don't know. For I think in science, bro. Like realistically, I feel like once you're dead, um, you know, you're just dead. Yeah, that's it. Like you, you know. But I don't know. I don't know. No one. That that's the biggest question. There's that there's ever been. You know, what and there's been no death. legitimate answer. Yeah, there's no proof ever. So it's like, I'm not gonna. There's no like my life to you when you you've really given me like no proof. You know what I mean? Um, like there's this uh there's this I think it's a Joe Rogan joke or something. It's either a Joe mm-hmm. Rogan or a Bill Burr. It's very offensive. Okay. So um, the joke is um, a mom tells her kid, don't play it, like stop um, playing with your imaginary friends. And then the kid tells her mom, we, we go see your imaginary friend every Sunday. Oh, yeah. Very true. Very <laughs> true. I mean, that kid is going to get an ass whooping if I ever seen one. Yeah. Oh man, he's in for it, but uh got a but, smart head on his shoulders thinking like that. I mean hell. Fucking you know shit. But like I don't really go into all that because I don't wanna I don't want religious groups going after me and I don't I don't yeah. want that whole deal. That's a big group to come after you too. I mean if um if uh re- like religious people get mad at me i they need to get mad at me for something that's like meaningful worthy you know what i mean mad about like instead of being like oh you said this you're going to hell i say words all the time like <laughs> yeah and that kind of stems back to like everyone's fucking so soft yeah like, you can't say shit nowadays without fucking worried about being someone getting offended or- yeah, and it's like it's, it's just fucking stupid. That's why, like, like comedians, especially being a comedian today, I think it's really fucking hard because 
you can't touch certain subjects that happen to be very fucking funny uh, without having to worry about being canceled. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you, so I had a conversation with someone a few days ago, right? Mm-hmm. And then uh, we were talking about, we were like making dick jokes because, you know, that's for some reason, that's the male's favorite subject to just make dick jokes because they're yeah. funny. <laughs> like, yeah, man, they are. It's it's like making vagina jokes. They're hilarious. It's a joke. Like, yeah. come on. How fucking stingy do you have to be to not laugh at a good dick joke? <laughs> like, you gotta like really be trying not to laugh at a fucking dick joke. Because uh, I told him, I was like, but honestly, though, if you think about it, dicks are a form of punishment. I don't want that in my ass. Like, <laughs> like, come on, dude. That it's a <laughs> it's a form of punishment. Because I don't want to be yeah yeah. So okay, okay. that's that's a pretty good one. That's that's a good way to look at it. a good way to look at it. Mm-hmm. So I feel bad for the woman on that end. <laughs> Imagine yeah. how badly that must hurt. <laughs> Some women are really fucking into it. That is true. This is, this there's an entire really like fucking... porn subjection subsections mm-hmm. devoted to it. It's gonna sound really fucking like gay, but you know where the the male G spot is actually in your fucking asshole. Yeah, I know. So it's like <laughs> <laughs> I've made mm-hmm. jokes about it. Yeah, and it's like yeah, that's that's a weird spot to put it, you know. Me and my brothers make jokes about it all the time. <laughs> like, fucking... like I made a joke the other day of uh I took a shit uh I took a shit so huge I think my G spot enlarged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <All right. laughs> that was a big shit. Yeah, because you know, me and my brother, we take like, you know worthy yeah shit that's photo like worthy mo- shit monumental yeah <laughs> like i like it Record like we're gonna shits. need we're gonna need reconstructive surgery these mm-hmm. type of shits that these are so because we just make yeah bring out the the fucking tape measure yeah <laughs> be yeah. like we got a six footer here <laughs> like, yeah yeah i gotta measure that shit <laughs> yeah. picture submit it to the guinness book of world records and be like yeah yep. man <laughs> y- y'all gotta get your ass down here you can fucking look at this or <laughs> call your buddies, be like, come on. Look at this, it's about to ferment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And guys and, do that shit, bro. Uh, and uh, the, a lot of my friends send me fucking pictures of their shits. <laughs> I, I, it's that's the weird thing about guys. We we find a bunch of weird shit funny. Like, <laughs> yeah, man. It's um like dick jokes. We send pictures of shit to each other. We like <laughs> Yeah, it's like we're you know, a weird species of human beings. Oh fuck yeah, fuck yeah. And we we just seem like we don't care about other people's feelings. Oh, it is what it is. Yeah, that's just that's just how it be. Yeah, I mean. And uh so have you heard do you know who Bo Burnham is? No. You oh no. <laughs> <laughs> He's a fucking amazing comedian. Bo so, Burnham. Have you seen Inside on Netflix? Mm-mm. Dude, you have to. It's. I've been looking for a new show to watch. Is it? it it's a comedy special. Okay. Okay. And uh, he's a fucking hilarious comedian. And dude, his social awareness is insane. Because it's just, he wrote a song named Welcome to the Internet that describes the internet perfectly. In a nutshell, okay. It, from both the good and the bad sides of the internet. Because the internet can be a great place. Oh, fuck yeah. It, it can Powerful be a fucking, um, like, because you can build communities and, like, talk to a bunch of awesome people and meet a bunch of cool people. But you can also go to the bad side of the internet where there's My Little Pony porn. And yeah, yeah you can. like people are calling each other cunts. Like yeah, you, you can find anything and everything on the internet. On, on the yeah, exactly. All the fucking time. Yeah, you can buy fucking you can buy livers, buy hearts. Yeah, like Fuck. you'd fucking yeah. buy a human skull on the internet. You know? Yeah, the internet yeah. is a dark fucking place. 
it's but it's also a, a very you know a very good happy place yeah yeah it's just it's all depend on how one chooses how you to use, use it. it so yeah i'll definitely check it out it's called inside yeah it's called inside okay okay and he is it's insane so he and he wrote directed edited he did all of it himself nice like, and i appreciate shit like that and uh He's actually a pretty good singer songwriter. Okay. And uh, he, well, uh, he's a good comedian and all that stuff. But what's his name again? Bo Burnham. Bo Burnham. Okay. There's this uh, animated video after we're done. I'll show it to you of okay. Welcome to the Internet that describes it perfectly and how a person is. Yeah. But, like, his comedy is just so fucking good. If The good thing about a comedian is jokes need to make you think. Yeah, exactly. The best jokes make you think. The best jokes make you go, like, wait, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, you know? And then you're thinking about it for the next two days. That's just like horror movies. The best effective horror just fucks with you after you watch it. Fuck yeah. Like say um i went on this in, on the bam sullivan podcast of um some found footage horror films are good most of it's like garbage yeah. like supernatural horror some most of it's garbage some of it's really good like sinister sinister fucked me up sinister was a a pretty good one sinister. The con- i like the conjurings you know conjurings were pretty well and uh the conjuring was actually Directed by the same guy that directed the first Saw movie. Really? Yeah. Okay. He co-wrote okay. the first Saw movie too. Nice, nice. And he was a, an executive producer on the rest of them. Yeah, yeah. So, damn. Okay, man was working. Okay, that's why like Saw fucked me up too. Saw was pretty. Uh, Dude, I love the Saw movies. Yeah, I'm like fuck, man. I Don't fucking like, love them. Psychological, man. fucking like, like damn. I was in that position, you know. I I would totally do it. Fuck, there's a lot of shit I wouldn't, man. But, like, say, if I was in the position of I wake up in a saw trap, and he's like, you have 30 seconds to do this or you die, I'd be like, oh, wait, what? Wait, what am I supposed to do? Yeah, it, it would. Like, I, would it, I don't know, man. I'd be like, fuck, this is a, it's a sick little game. It depends why, what yeah. I had to do, you know? Yeah. If I had uh, to chop off my arm, I don't think I would be. I Well, if it was, a, if I had to chop off my arm from, like, right here down i would uh, uh, see, I, i'm I, right-handed anyway see i don't know Fuck about my that. left hand <laughs> yeah see like i don't know some things are like like if i had to cut off my leg honestly i'd rather just be dead than fucking hopping around the rest of my life You're like yeah <laughs> yeah yeah or like you know like even an arm like if i had to cut off any limb yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm low key just fucking kill me. Um, yeah, I wouldn't make it in a Saw movie, actually, dude. I, you know, I, if I had to fuck myself up in any way, like irreversible, yeah, uh, I'm just gonna. You'd just be like, kill me? Yeah, natural selection, just fucking kill me. It's you know? my time to go. Yeah. See you later, exactly. boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Cause yeah, I don't want to live the rest of my life like, like I might cut some shit out of my eye. You know what I mean? Um, like how in Saw too, he had the the key. He had the key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might because you know, ad- think about it, adrenaline alone, you'd get through that. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. So yeah, I don't know. It just really depends. It what depends on where it was. is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What I had to do. Uh, like the one where he's uh he's drowning, you know, had to stick a fucking straw through his throat. I could yeah, he's that. in the yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was he was lucky he was able to hit it at the right spot because you could fuck that up very easily. Oh fuck yeah! He had a fuck very yeah. very easy chance of fucking yeah, that very up very and fucking narrow himself fucking and like fucking... just stabbing himself in the throat and then like just right fucking... in the Adam's apple and he'd just die. Yeah, he's lucky he hit his one pipe. I wasn't the dude a doctor. I'm pretty sure the dude was a doctor. No, uh, you're talking about Dr. Gordon, who he had to saw his foot off in the first movie. And then and, uh, it wasn't known until Saw 7 that he he was the one helping Jigsaw 
with all the traps and he was like doing all the surgery parts and he's the one that put the key in the dude's eye he's the one that you know did all the real medical shit so that's you cut his fucking foot off for for what then if he was working with saw no he, he was put in the game the first game oh and then decided to help him afterwards because like jigsaw is mo or his um his philosophy is if you go through this torture you'll find enlightenment and you'll be instant instantly rehabilitated hmm. and then you'll become a disciple of jigsaw and whole 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 deal i it would huh. take like six hours for me to completely you know, explain. explain the okay, entire okay. saw series i could okay, let's do it, it. i'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah that goes back to effective horror it's there's there's a lot of if a horror movie can fuck you up afterwards like in the head then it's a good movie yeah yeah i'm gonna say they did their uh did their job like a good horror movie that's just a, just a masterpiece of perfection is the shining the shining is a great fucking movie yeah with jack nicholson dude he yeah, kills that it. that is a great fucking movie and i haven't seen i didn't see it recently until about a year ago two years ago really so I was really, I was missing out, man. Because Jack Nicholson was the perfect person to put in Oh, that fuck role. yeah. Yeah, man. Everything in that movie is executed so fucking well. And it's because you got Stanley Kubrick directing. The man did Clockwork Orange and like Apollo 13 and a bunch of other shit. Oh, Apollo 13, man. That's a great fucking movie. Like he movie. did. And... Uh, from what I heard, working for Stanley Kubrick, it'll take him six hours just to get one shot perfectly. He'll do several take. From what I heard, the yeah. chick that played Wendy, Shelley Duvall, she was losing hair. Yeah, I, I um, the, yeah, yeah, I, I read some shit about that. Like she was actually really fucked up after doing the making of that movie. Yeah, so um. I don't know. I believe it. Like you know, that, that like some directors we demand earlier, a lot of their actors. Yeah, and, and uh, you know that's fucking very stressful, especially if uh, I would be feeling pretty defeated if I had the same take fucking sixty times. Hey, Terry. Yeah. Do you want to play game piece with me and um, Jaden? No, right now. After I will though. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there's one, there's two things in life that I'm doing. The reason I don't do any fuck shit is because I don't want to end up in a saw trap. <laughs> like I'm, com- I'm not fucking around. I'm completely serious. Okay. Okay. I, okay. Like I, I don't do any fuck shit. Like I don't, uh, I don't uh, say commit murder or like you know. Yeah, yeah. Do a bunch of fuck shit that would put me in a saw trap because he can fucking in the movies he does it for anything. He does it because someone, uh, someone was popping antidepressants. He put her in a fucking saw trap because of that. Ah, that's fucked up. Why? Well, it's because in the game, it's I would have to explain the whole thing, but like, yeah, yeah. basically, she was popping antidepressants, and he, because of her husband, and like whole deal. But I don't do anything fucked because I don't want to end up with a saw trap. Okay. And all the thing, like you know, Final Destination, right? Yes. The, everything done in those movies, I specifically don't do. So they, they did it right then because they uh yeah they they, they s- spooked you. That series of movies traumatized an entire generation of people. Yeah, I don't drive behind like uh, those fucking... trucks. Yeah, fuck no, fuck no. Yeah, dude. Was... They, uh, so the podcast I was doing yesterday with uh, Bam Sullivan. Yeah. He talked. To, he brought up since we brought up Final Destination, there was an actual like log truck, like you remember that scene. Yep. The log truck scene when the fucking log goes through. That yep. happened in real life. To oh, really? Yeah. <sighs> he sent me the article and everything. <laughs> Damn. And it's so like it so easily could happen too. That's why, yeah. And the name, drive behind him. the name of the fucking article was Every Millennial's Worst Fear. <laughs> yeah, that's fuck, man. Yeah, also like. I don't know if you've ever seen A Thousand Ways to Die. Yes, dude. I 
that used that, to fuck with that me. series fucked me up when i was a kid that's yeah. the reason my sister stopped chewing her hair because you remember that episode when the chick when the chick was chewing her hair and it like got in her stomach and like tied her stomach up I, see that's man i didn't know about that either I, there, I, there was I, an episode where this chick was chewing her hair because i don't know why girls do that but they do yeah they, they chew it, their, it's, it's fucking weird but she was chewing her hair and she was like swallowing it and then it just made a knot in her stomach and killed her oh wow yeah yeah that'll that'll, that'll make that'll make you stop a lot of them <laughs> are fucking like just out of the box yeah i was like wow like like there was this one where this dude was having sex while riding a fucking motorcycle and then he just crashed into a tree <laughs> like yeah who the fuck does that and it, exactly and there's like uh another one where these two cars are driving you know side by side and the driver and passenger are like you know making out and they both have uh like tongue piercings and they and the tongue piercings get caught yeah yeah and then they uh like they're like reaching a divider or something. I don't know, but pretty much, yeah, they got fucking, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, dude, some of them are just so out of the box. Like, it never yeah, happened. I was like, yeah, I was like, dude, there's, there's no fucking way this is real. There's no fucking way that's possible to have sex and ride like, a fucking motorcycle. Ride a motorcycle I, at the same it's time. Like, like, yeah, you could, but, but it's I don't think highly unlikely. Yeah, no I one in their right mind is going to do that. No, fuck no. Fuck no. Because you're going to crash into a tree. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean you know i might might cruise down the street and try it you know but, uh, <laughs> uh, you'll catch me on no fucking freeway sending it like uh, uh like fuck no you just praying you praying on my downfall at that one <laughs> that man you gotta be real fucking stupid for that so um how you feeling right now man pretty good pretty good man am uh, i doing a good job <laughs> yeah man you're keeping me entertained so you, since you've know, you knew me in high school yeah and uh i'm out now finally i'm out <laughs> got out of that rat race um and now that you're talking to me uh how would you say that i've changed and like go into specifics or like detail or whatever okay okay um well as i said earlier you seem a lot more like intelligent you know what i mean like you've uh um uh, like you know what you're talking about you know what i mean when, when you come down to shit um i would say your confidence has improved too actually man since you're uh you know what i mean you're out here doing these podcasts uh really trying to put yourself out there that's the reason i started the podcast so i yeah. can like learn how to carry on a conversation and because the yeah. first three podcasts like the early episodes from like one to four where yeah. like everybody has those like things that they do their early work that is just bad yeah yeah it's all it's all stepping stones you know you're just yeah. learning learning and the then new, uh... like i can't even go back and watch or listen to those because i might check them out I might, it just cringes bad. me out because i don't have i don't have the structure i think my best interviews are when i have structured questions and then yeah. once i run out of questions i just rip up riff off of the person yeah and it's we just, just free ball it yeah 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 um so you know uh confidence is improved and and as you were just saying man like we're having a lot more like intellectual conversations than we were back in uh high school because back so, in high school we were just like did you see that bass solo <laughs> like, yeah yeah exactly exactly just you know uh typical high school jargon but um yeah man uh, i see you grew the hair out too which is fire good yeah. shit yeah it's so. because no one tell no one's telling me to cut it yeah i i would have a beard but i shaved like maybe a week ago oh, i see it i see it yeah i'd, I'd have a, a rock and mustache too but i shaved like because <laughs> if you go to the because the podcasts that are like maybe like 12 and 13 like the earlier podcasts that are like semi-recent that are double digits you can see that my i got a like a nice nice beard that's tight bro i don't I, know I, I don't I want any facial hair at the moment, bro, but I see down the road, yeah, I'd, I'd want a nice little beard. Because, like, I can I can grow out a rocking beard. Nice, nice. No, nothing, nothing like Bam, Bam had. Oh, man. Fucking, that man had it. The mustache, bro. Rocking, rocking, rocking facial hair. Man, that's 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 my ideal mustache. If I want a fucking mustache, yeah, I'd get that see, little I, I can't I can't grow something out like that. Yeah. I can just grow out, say, like a, you know, well, like you're young man normal you're young. beard 
you know, watch, give it, give it fucking five years. Yeah, you're gonna be you're gonna be rocking with some facial hair. And uh so as you said, I can actually carry on a conversation now. Yep, yep. And I think I've noticed that uh since you talked about my confidence, that I've noticed I'm uh I'm slowly but surely kind of getting better at since like I'm out of high school. I, I don't need to care about clicks or if this yeah. person likes me or if this person doesn't like me, I'm gonna be ruined. I yeah, I've never cared about that to begin with. But like, you know, how in high school you think, oh yeah, if I'm not hanging out with these people, I'm never gonna fucking yeah do yeah. anything. Yeah, and um, I feel like high school is kind of like uh, I don't know. It, you you work on your it's social a test skills of character. in high school. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But um, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I can't think of anything else. Like I said, it's more intelligent. <laughs> yeah, I, I can actually um, carry on a conversation and fucking yeah. talk your ear off for twenty minutes about horror films. Or yeah, like, you, you were never music. able to do this in high school. It's because we never talked about these things. Trust me, I would have. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we never brought any of this up. Yeah, yeah. Never you fair, saw this was, out uh, of me. We were talking about like, you know, metal bands. Yeah. Yeah, and to be fair, you know, we only had that that hour of fucking wood shop and Yeah, of it. we never really this is the legitimate first time we've legit sat down and had a conversation. Yeah. Yeah, because exactly. like you know we text back and forth and whatever but that yeah, yeah. there's there's a disconnect there yeah exactly exactly here there's more of a real-time connection exactly you know and um, i mean yeah it's in front of a computer screen but that's because of the circumstances at hand yeah yeah and it's you know it's still a genuine fucking sit down conversation as it would be in person you know yeah the same fucking thing yeah, it's the exact same thing, except for, you know, over a computer screen. Yeah, yeah. So, so and uh, so I'm going to learn, I'm going to go to college and learn how to uh, write movies. And after, after I do that, I'm going to do this whole wrestling thing. And I think the hardest part for me of, like, being a pro wrestler i obviously i'm not but i would think one of the hardest parts since i'm a big music guy you know this i love music yep yep, yep. and you know how wrestlers have their entrance music yes see the difference between a wrestler and an mma fighter a mma fighter it can change like every event yeah they don't have a set in stone entrance theme like a wrestler does. Now, now, when you're saying wrestling, you mean? I mean, pro- I mean professional wrestling. And that okay, okay. So like, uh, like the wrestling in high school, right? No, that's amateur wrestling. That's like Olympic wrestling. That's okay, like, so that's like MMA wrestling. Okay, okay. The wrestling I'm talking about is you're getting you're getting hit over the head with chairs. Oh, and, okay. Like like some WWE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. And, oh uh, man, that's tight! Yeah, I can definitely see you doing that. So, I mean, I love amateur wrestling. I really do. But yeah. I've watched pro wrestling since I was like a very young child, and that's kind of been my goal for the longest time. That's why I wrestled in high school because I had the word wrestling in it. Yeah, wrestling. And, but like that goes back to my point of. There's, it's it's a complete difference between an MMA fighter and a wrestler, a pro wrestler. Um, an MMA fighter, what they do in order to choose like their walkout songs is Dana White texts them, and they're like, oh, what do you want as your walkout song? And then they're like, I want this. They're like, okay. And it can change from event to event that they're fighting at. Yeah. But, but with, it, pro, with wrestling, pro wrestling, right? with a pro wrestler, they, um, they choose a song and they decide – well, it's not like it's, it wouldn't be like their song forever because, you know, gimmicks change and there's a change of character where if there's a if there's a change of character, you need to change the music and change your look and the whole deal. But like, say. Say it like. 
uh, someone like uh, that's changed their music. Uh, uh, shit. I, I like how I watch pro wrestling, but I can't think of one right now. Yeah, you're good. But, you're good. Uh, like, say for some, okay, like like a Stone Cold Steve Austin. Steve Austin's the fucking man. Same yeah. with the Undertaker. He's the fucking man. Fuck yeah. But you see how they've had the same song for their entire career. It's never changed. Yeah. Well, I think that that that's what kind of makes them, you know. It's synonymous with that one person. Like iconic, you know what I mean? Like uh like John Cena. Does John Cena still fucking do that shit? He's he's uh he had an interview with this dude named Chris Van Vliet, who I've talked to before. He's a wrestling interviewer, he's pretty dope. Uh he had an interview with him and he said that it's only a matter of time before he comes back to the WWE and starts nice. wrestling again. But you know, John Cena actually like raps his own entrance theme. Really? Yeah, and he has he, he has a legit the, like rap album. I I can see that man. Made in like two thousand five. Damn, John and Cena. And it's actually it's actually kind of okay. Okay, okay. I don't listen to rap, so I don't know what's good or bad. Yeah, but like, uh it's all right. Okay. Yeah, I'll well, check it out. So he does a little the little intro shit for his uh. The, like he sings the, the entire da, da, da. song. Damn, that's tight. And John uh, Cena. See, like, there's certain bands that are synonymous with certain wrestlers. Like for Motorhead, you think of Triple H. Yeah. Because, and the good thing about the good thing about Triple H and Motorhead is that that the song, the game that the trip that um Motorhead wrote for him, it is an actual song off of their album. It's not like a WWE licensed song. It's like yeah. a legitimate song off of their album. So they wrote it for him? Since, like, he got caught. What, how that whole went down was um, since, from what I've seen, the, the man himself, uh, his name's Paul Levesque, but, like, Hunter Hearst Helmsley is his, like, wrestling name. Yeah. Hunter wanted a change of character and um he used to he listened to motorhead growing up and they told they were like oh you want motorhead to do your music he was like i have that option yeah and then uh he met lemmy and all all the dudes and they were like you know like let's fucking do this and then from 2002 on uh, he's had well Motorhead's wrote, wrote several songs for him okay, they wrote okay. the game they wrote a line in the sand which was he, he had a group named Evolution which was their theme song nice. uh, King of Kings I think yeah King of Kings and I think that might be it so they've wrote three three songs for him and Damn, he's okay, used okay. all of them from 2002 it's until now, actually. Damn. Okay, so that was really fucking with him. So when you think, say, if you if you're a wrestling fan and you hear glass shatter, you think of Steve Austin. Fuck if yeah. You, if you hear a gong, you think of the Undertaker. If you hear that opening chord of uh, the game by Motorhead, you think of Triple H. You know, like there's yeah. certain there's certain things about. A wrestler's entrance theme that are so vital to their character. Facts, facts. So you can't choose. You can't choose like one song and be like, "Oh, I'm gonna change it next week." No, like, you gotta have it. You resonate. can't do that. You know, you gotta have it stick with you. Mm -hmm. And that's what seems like the hardest thing for me is choosing one song because I'm a huge music fan, and if I think about it. I'm going to have to hear that song every time I walk out. Say I wrestle 200 every day for 200 days a year. I hear that song every day for 200 yeah. days a year. You must really fucking like that song in order yeah. to, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's a big commitment. So, yeah, it's a um, huge I feel like, commitment. Uh, just, you know, I feel like you should just 
pick a song that really goes with your character you know what i mean that really symbolizes yeah. who you are and uh you know I, I assume at some point you're just gonna get a fucking tone deafness for it after hearing it so long yeah <laughs> like just... and i found out that Corey taylor is a huge wrestling fan oh so and he's the man yeah yeah so get that going. I, i'm gonna be if that ever does happen i'll be like yo can you do this for me please yeah and speaking of wrestling and you know how we talked about john cena yeah i talked about it on the podcast i did yesterday with uh bam okay. um the day after my 17th birthday john cena followed me on twitter damn okay okay and like you know i pass it off normally because like you know there's fan accounts of because re- they're big time wrestlers there's fan yeah. accounts and role-playing accounts which are really weird but like you know stuff like this crazy stuff so i pass it off right like oh yeah that's not really him yeah and then i i see the blue check mark and i'm like wait a second i'm gonna have to look into this that makes me think wait a second yeah and then i click on his profile and then i see the followers and i'm like oh it's actually him holy mm. shit and then i proceed oh. to mark out <laughs> yeah yeah I was like John Cena. Like I, I, I just um, I, when I get excited about something, I keep my cool, but I also, yeah, like, I've gotten to a point where, if something really cool happens, I'll be like, yeah, that's awesome. I won't be like, you know, all giddy Aesthetic. like a fucking fifteen year old kid. Yeah, try to keep your composure. I'm just like, yeah, it's cool, whatever. And people think, oh, you're too cool for it. I was like, no. No, I'm just, nah, I'm, just, I'm just keeping my composure. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Keeping it cool, I'm not, keeping it pushing. I'm not gonna just you know jump around like Roger Rabbit and shit. Yeah, you know? it's got to be some real good news for me today. It's got to be like, um, fucking. I just got a contract from World Wrestling Entertainment. And get that call from Vince McMahon. Be like, yo, you want to work for us? And be like, fucking, yeah. of course I do. And then that. If that did happen, I would jump around like a 15 year old girl. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, that, that would be warranted. To know, or to be like your main eventing WrestleMania in front of 300,000 people. That would make me fucking jump around yeah. in my seat. I'd be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's tight. So, what, what's like the, what's the salary look like during wrestling? It's minimum. If you're like contracted to a big name company, Minimum, or like a company with some name value, minimum is like 300k a year. Damn, minimum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Living cozy with that. So, yeah. Um, so how you feeling, man? We've been, I don't know how long we've been going for because I haven't kept track of time. I just let the conversation go. Yeah, let me let me look how long we've been going actually. Just look at our text. Man, it's been it's been about two hours. Cause it's ten forty eight now. Yeah, yeah, damn man, we just keep it pushing. Cause you know, fuck it, I, I, like I can talk to you all day, but yeah, well, I just feel like we're, man. now we're running out of time. <laughs> yeah, we're just scrambling for uh, words. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, do you have any? You have any more questions or? Uh, no, I already ra- I rattled those off about an hour ago. So oh we've shit! Just, really? We've just been riffing for an hour yeah damn okay okay and talking about talking a bunch of random shit damn that's tight that's tight well fuck um well damn what's the plan then you want to keep you want to keep it going or uh sure i guess i i don't i don't know i i hope this does well in the algorithm world which is like you know since i have an rss feed i have the yeah. podcast on spotify and google and all that stuff oh nice nice so i'm actually trying to be a legit podcaster now yeah, man, and uh, I've been watching a lot of podcasts too, and they like they do pretty well. They do pretty well, uh, just depending on like the topics that uh, mm-hmm. they're talking about. And so, it depends on the host. Yeah, yeah, very true, very true. So, yeah. um, is there any like uh, like any topics that you plan on like indulging in? Because I know a lot of the like the podcasts I've been listening to, they kind of just uh, like a good. They had um, a couple women. They had like four women on their show and uh, they were pretty much just asking them like, what do you bring to the table in terms of like a relationship? And uh, a lot of them had 
like no fucking answer you know what i mean because we could talk about that (laughs) yeah yeah so um you know what what do you think women bring to the table um uh you mean like in general (laughs) yeah 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 just in general just in general well to like a relationship you know I, i mean if you think about I like how this is flipped. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, okay, you know what? Actually, actually, you know what? Fuck that. Fuck that. Uh, I got it. I got a, a good, a good question for you. Uh, it's kind of on the like edgier side, but um, fuck it. So, um, <clears throat> how many? Okay, say you're locked in a gymnasium full of first graders. Uh, this seems like a family guy question right now yeah 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 because you, it you is. yeah you remember that episode yeah yeah oh yeah yeah um he's like it's how many fourth insane. greatest <laughs> he's like if you line them up in the bathroom stall just, just bam, kicking bam, bam. Just <laughs> kicking yeah yeah so um essentially the question is you're locked in a gymnasium we'll say first graders with various sizes and temperaments how many do you think you could kill before they overpower you what? <laughs> yeah. How, how many? You know what I mean? The fuck? <clears throat> What's the number? What's what? The number? Web, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I don't know how to answer that. All right. Well, let, let me. All right. It, it was. Uh, what weapons do I have at my disposal? <laughs> you have. You have everything on. You know, just the clothes on your back. What you. What you have on you right now. That's all you got. I don't have anything on me, so I just got I just got the clothes on my back. All right. Yeah, yeah, you got some hands, you know. So, um, how big is the gymnasium? We're talking uh, high school gym. High school gymnasium, you know, and oh. we're talking we're talking unlimited fourth graders, but not an overwhelming amount. You said first you, graders. First graders, first grade. All so, right. like six and seven year, six seven year olds, you know. How many do you think you could kill before you get? Why am I killing them? There's no reason. Get out. No, no, no. There's just you know what I mean. They locked you in there, and And, you know, yeah. They they know what time it is. You know what time it is. Um, It's time to get down to business. Exactly. Exactly. You said a gymnasium full of first graders. (laughs) First graders, and how many would it take to kill, or how many would you kill before you're overpowered? Before I'm just like fuck it, I'm done. Yeah, yeah, before they, they take over, you know, they win. And obviously, you, ha- you have room to maneuver, you know what I mean? You have room to, yeah. you know. So, like I said, you're not overwhelmed, but there's a, a good amount of them. And they're, they're unlimited. They're going to keep coming until you're out. Um, there's, okay. <laughs> I have to sit and think about this for a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Um, I was saying... You know, mine what would your answer be while I'm thinking? What would your answer be? All right. Well, first, first and foremost, um, as Bill Burr would say, I would set the tone. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would, uh, I would do something really. You would establish up. dominance. Exactly. Dominance. Dominance. I would, yeah. I would do something so fucked up to the the first wave of uh first graders coming at me that the other ones are scared. Yeah, they kind of you know step back and think about it. You know um i'm talking like i'm gonna be biting out fucking esophaguses uh, <laughs> you know snapping necks cashing checks uh snapping necks and shitting down their throat yeah yeah so um parsley man because there's six um you said various sizes and shapes yeah and temperaments you know and temperaments I mean? too you <laughs> get some some pissed off sixth graders or six-year-olds per- yeah six-year-olds yeah yeah so i would you know I would develop like a a muscle memory for just fucking snapping necks. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I, <laughs> I, I would, you know what I mean? <laughs> for the first couple of them, you know, I'm just I'm gonna be. You got to get that routine. Exactly. You know, I'm, I'm gonna set that motion. You know, to where you, you know, kid running up, snap, snap. You know, being able to be able to maneuver like that and. uh you know, some good fucking chest kicks, you know what I mean? Knock, knock yeah. the wind out a couple of them. You got to get that Anderson Silva front kick, you know what I oh, mean? Oh, fuck yeah, dude. I'll be laying them out. So, so I guess I could probably kill about fucking. Man. Because <laughs> their skulls are hard, you know what I mean? You're going to be yeah, fucking punching it's them. It's a human shit. skull. Yeah, that shit is so. going to hurt your hand. 
yeah. all right we'll, we'll we'll shoot on the safe side bro i could probably kill about fucking like th- 36 like 35 i can kill about 35 i, I, I would say maybe 40 40. On the safe side, maybe 40. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, you know, uh, I feel like I would just have to be there. You know what I mean? I, I would have to see how the... How, how the how they look. And like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like what, what my situation is. Yeah, and how many, you know, how fast can I snap these fucking necks and keep it pushing before, you know, I'm just I'm fucking... I'm just like, tired. I can't do this anymore. Yeah, exactly. Before, uh, I don't know, but like Peter from Family Guy had a pretty good fucking... You, you get them down yeah. like a, a narrow hallway. Yeah, narrow hallway. And, you and just, just, just bam, roadhouse, yeah. roadhouse, yeah. roadhouse. Like just kicking. I could probably, I could probably, man, I could take a lot of them. I would say if it was like how Peter described it, it was a narrow hallway, narrow entry point, just bam, bam, yep. bam, roadhouse kicks the entire way. I would say at least 300. Good number, Three. 300. Oh man! Spartan gotta... kicking. Think about it. You Spartan kick their heads off. How old off? are they? How old are they? They're, they're, you said six years old. Okay, okay. Man, you. Would, I don't think I could kill a six-year-old with one fucking Spartan kick. Think about would... how much force you'd be able to kick with, though. Or it could either be a Spartan kick or a Roadhouse kick, which is Roundhouse to the and you're fucking saying, head. Okay, you're saying kick to the head. Yes. I don't think that would kill him. But they're still I'm, out of the way. They're gonna be out of the way, yeah. But they wait, okay. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. gonna wake up. They gonna wake yeah, up. You know. That, yeah, yeah. So or you can just thinking, kick them in the chest. It doesn't matter. That, that's what I was thinking. You know. Yeah. Kick them real good in the fucking chest. You know. And they're done. Uh, you know, get that chest caving in. Yeah, they they break gonna, ribs yeah. and like that's internal bleeding. They're dead. Yeah. So I could probably I could probably kill about fucking narrow hallway. I it, I would <laughs> say like. Like a hundred, man, hundred and fifty. <laughs> On the See, good side, <laughs> yeah. Because your leg's gonna get tired. You know what I mean? Because you gotta but, really be sending these kicks if you if you're finna. You know what I mean? But Break think some about fucking it. ribs. If you have like a Muay Thai background to where you know how to deliver these kicks with ease without getting tired. You okay. Can, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You, okay. Okay. You can Given get it good. I knew Muay Thai. And or, you knew how to deliver a perfect roundhouse kick, yeah, like then, uh, to the body kick where they're fucked up for life and they're dead. And you know how to use your energy to the point where you're not going to get tired anytime soon. Yeah, it's, it's, you, you, know, you could be the there for man. Yeah, you could be there for you could be there for a while. Fucking just kicking, just kicking kids. But, uh, with the clothes I have on my back, I'm I'm shooting one fifty. 150 that, that's about it clothes i have on my back i could roll up my pants so yeah. i would say about 200 200 yeah, that, yeah. that's a solid number yeah because i'm yeah, wearing cause... pants right now so i could just yeah, roll yeah. them up and just yeah yeah because i got man i'm like i was saying bro that just fuck you don't need to start switching you know switching kicks switching legs yeah that's why you got to be dominant with both legs yeah I'm that's not, why I'm muay thai not. is a good idea <laughs> So I'm, I'm just gonna start throwing some fucking straights, you know, knocking some kids out. <laughs> All uh, Anderson Silva. <laughs> yeah, they get that going. But you know, if they start piling up, man, you know what I mean. You keep dropping kids, and it's a narrow hall. They're gonna start piling up. You know, they're gonna start have to climb over the fucking the kids you've already uh, already already bought. But if they pile up to a certain degree, no more kids can get through, and you're you're good. But how are you going to keep stacking them on top? You know what I mean? If the kid, here's how I'm picturing it, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> your, your back's against the wall and you got about a fuck, you got, we'll say like 20 kids just piled up and the, the other kids are climbing over the fucking dead kids to get to you. So now, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so now you're looking up like, you know, you got kids fucking dropping on you. Okay. With that, with that whole philosophy in mind, I'm gonna say I can kill about fucking 40, 40 of these kids because right. they're gonna, like I said, they're gonna start just raining on you. All right, give me a minute. Yeah, yeah, do your thing. There we go. Sorry, my fucking, uh, my shit's all fucked up. Oh, you're good. You hear me? Yeah, I'm hearing you. All right, I gotta put my hair up. It's hot. So yeah, give me a minute. Felt... Yeah, yeah, do your thing. I'm gonna go get a water.
as we take that quick break, I need to plug some shit where um, the most recent podcast of the Culture Shock has been, besides this one, it has been the episode with Bam motherfucking Sullivan, who is a independent deathmatch wrestler from New York. And he wrestles under the H2O Hardcore Hustle Association. He's wrestled with people like Jeff Cannonball, the Bulldozer, Bulldozer Matt Tremont, uh, this man named Mouse. And he's just a, if you want to hear a kick ass conversation about pro wrestling and horror or, or horror movies, then I highly recommend you sit down for that two hour conversation. And it will be greatly appreciated. And just thank you for being here. I appreciate that. Because I understand you could be doing anything else right now. And the future, Have you thought about doing that like as a career? The future of it is, you uh, should. is on the way. All right. Yeah, well, that's updates on So, let me know, bro. Just, bro shit. I get down with that. So, do you have any other random ass questions about like just not killing kids, but like <laughs> say anything that comes to mind, like about chicks or anything? Okay. Um, or if I can... just a, a random question that pops in your head. Hmm. Nah, I can't. I can't think of any. I, I can sit here think about one if you want. Well, uh, yeah, man. I, I, yeah, I can't. You got any? I can't think of any. Uh, I can't think of any because I'm not. I would say I'm a cool person to be around. Like, say in that type of aspect, because like you know, I respect them. I'm not trying to be like, show me your vagina. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, well, we can talk about like, um, I feel like today's like, uh, like respecting women is kind of like, uh, it's to a point, it's kind of to a point, like, like, they're it's to their own detriment, yeah, yeah, it's and not it's, to their benefit anymore, it's just to their own detriment, yeah. So, and like, also, I feel like you get kind of like, you get kind of called, you get called a simp. Yeah, you know, if you're uh, if you're just trying to be nice to like say say I have a lot of friends that are chicks because I'm just a nice person. Like I I I, I talk to people. I I help out with problems and all that stuff. I already yeah. talked about that. So if I talk to somebody and I'm like, oh, and I'm just I'm just being nice to them, I get called a simp, which doesn't make any fucking sense. It I don't, don't even know. It don't. If it's... I'm being honest, I have no idea what it fucking is. Yeah, and it, it well, like okay, there's certain things you can do to be a fucking like a real simp. You know Wait, what I mean? Is it when is it when like you're, uh, because I heard one definition that's just like, it's kind of like the obsessive psycho girlfriend, where you'll do anything to please that person, like even yeah, if yeah, they don't true. want to like be around you. Yeah, it's a, it's essentially like that. Yeah, um, where it's like if they if I can't have them, nobody else can. Yeah, it's like you, you know a simp when you see one. You know what I mean? Like simp activity. Uh, and it, it really varies, but like like respecting women uh shouldn't be in that category because I, I like can't right just be nice to someone that's a that's a friend of mine. Yeah, yeah, they like just uh, be like, Oh, you bitch. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like uh like for example, one time uh like I had this girlfriend, I was just uh like hanging out with her and I, I um like was taking her out. And my friend sent me a video of all of them. It was a joke, clearly. Yeah. Uh, but they're all like, uh, you know, they put the phone on the floor and they're like pointing at the phone. Like, is that a simp? Like, that's a simp, you know? Yeah. They're talking about me. And, mm. you know, obviously it was a joke. But, um, but, yeah, I feel like even like today, a lot of people will get called a simp for just like basic. Uh, basic like, human decency. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, it's, you know. I don't know. It's, it's kind of annoying. It's 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 dumb. You can't you just you can't do any basic human function functions of being nice to another person. 
Yeah. And you it, can't be civil to another human being without being like on like being put on blast for it. Yeah, so yeah, that's that's the issue us men are poised with today. And even like like I think the uh I'm not an activist by any means. I yeah. I, I I couldn't give a fuck about social issues if I even tried. Okay. I would just, I would be like, here's my stance on every social issue ever. I'm like, yeah, that sucks. I hope it gets better. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I feel like I'm not educated enough to really. Because I don't, I don't want to be like, because I could still make fun of shit. I, like, I could be like a Bill Burr and still make fun of stuff. Yeah. But it's like, I could just, I don't care enough to like care about it. Yeah, doesn't really pertain. Yeah, pertain to you. And like the the chicks that just need to shut the fuck up are the people that are like, because I'm brutally honest. You know this. Yes. Everyone yes. who's ever talked to me knows this. I don't cut shit. I'm not like, oh yeah, I'll do this if it makes you feel better. I can give a fuck about your feelings. I yeah. don't care. Yeah, but that that's it. That's Especially, I don't know. It's a good mindset that mindset to have. You know what I mean. I'd yeah. rather be brutally honest and you hate me than me being yeah. fake and you love me. Exactly. You exactly. know what I mean? Because I don't see the value in being fake and being like, "Oh yeah, fucking, we'll do whatever you want," or like you know, being fake to a person and just being super nice instead of me being me and yeah. just being given my honest opinion and then them hating me i'd rather that happen than me being nice and fake yeah. and all that yeah be true to yourself you know be true to them i'd rather not cut shit and lie than lie and get myself into a fucking rabbit hole yeah yeah because then you're, you're kind of giving these like false pretenses of who you really are because uh... if i start lying i'll lose track of the lies and i'll catch myself in my own lie and then I'll I'll have to lie my lie myself out of that situation. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. And that that's uh it's one of those. That is not a good situation to be in. No, it is not. So I was talking um to uh this one chick the other day, and because I'm you know, I'm a nice human being. I'm like, yeah, hey, how are you? And I tell her straight up, I'm like, look, I don't know how to carry a conversation because I'm just a shy person. Yeah. So I just I, like I just I just bring out the elephant in the room at first so they can be like, oh, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. We'll work on this. And then we just like I just ask them questions like, you know, you like horror films? Then if you like horror movies, I can carry on a conversation with you. Yeah. Or, you know, if you yeah, get, get what they're interested in or even if you like if you like hockey. I'm not a hardcore hockey fan. I'm a casual hockey fan where I can talk about like the Stanley cup game or like, you know, some, something to that effect. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but the one thing I hate is that, uh, cause you know me, I am very insecure <laughs> with the, the way I look. I think I'm a very ugly person. <laughs> Uh, that's in your drink, I'm, I'm a really, uh, really fucked up motherfucker. Just, you know, I, if I were to, I have a very low self image, if that makes any sense. I did too, man. Like, I, I mean, see, I like see that. myself in a very low light. Yeah. Yeah. Like if I were to compare myself to somebody, it would be like, uh, who's a really ugly person. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're not ugly, man. Come but on. like, it's just, it's that thing. You know, it's yeah, yeah. Well, man, I, I feel like a lot of it, like you don't see yourself how others view you. So you, you know, I see myself in a very lower. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, tier. so your self image is is completely different from what other people see, and that's what I'm like, like trying to learn. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, how, how you think you look is completely different than uh, how others view you. So. And you're just trying to find you know, self-acceptance, not yeah, self-acceptance, yeah. but like both self and um, what's the word public acceptance by yeah. your peers. 
Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Because the worst thing you can do to a person, it like say prisoners, for example, the worst thing you can do to a prisoner is put them in solitary confinement which is they're alone in a room by themselves. Yeah. Which which is fucking hilarious. If you think about it. Cuz uh, I I don't know the mind mind picks at itself, you know, the mind starts uh going to some really dark places and then that's how people die in prison. <laughs> yeah. But like that's pretty funny if you think about it. Those people are like, "Oh, I want to be alone all the time." No, you fucking don't. No. No, <laughs> no you don't. Yeah. Because like that is a sad fucking existence. Thing. Yeah, like yeah, being alone, man. Fuck. Like you get you like I said, the mind will go to fucking some places you you never even thought of. Like, say for example, um like you you remember uh back what was it? It was like either last year or two years ago. I was that one chick uh, fucked me over. You remember that? I, I, I told you. I told you about it. Yeah, I remember and, that. Uh, uh, believe it or not, I that kind of that didn't fuck everything up for me. But I just don't. You know how most people are like, "Oh, I need time," and then I'll go out and they'll try myself again. At yeah. this point, I'm just like, I I don't care enough to go out and be like, "Oh," because I don't. I don't have the fucking time <laughs> yeah. to get de- to sit down and be like, oh yeah, you're awesome. Uh, blah, 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 blah. You know? Yeah. But yeah. I, I got shit I need to do. <laughs> and, and yeah. I, I feel d- like, um, like I, I low key, you know, like going through shit like that low key, it like motivates you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, it's like sad as it is like getting fucked over really does like kind of help. You start, you start getting on your shit, you know. You start doing better for yourself. Cause uh, hell, if it, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be doing this right now. Exactly, exactly. So you know, it's like growth, growth through pain. And I wouldn't have created a whole brand, of the whole Mikey Atlas thing. I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a whole, whole. Mikey I mean, Atlas, I, that's that. I I created that before I met her, but I never really, you know, it was just a here and there like YouTube thing. Now yeah. it's like every name of every social media I have. You still do uh it's probably off topic. You still uh damn what was what was the band name? Subliminal Subliminal Paranoia. Paranoia. Yeah, you still got that going? Uh I'm I'm trying. It's but it's kind of hard to like you know do it because we're all in different places. And yeah. we all have different plans of what we're going to do. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's really hard to lock down a certain date. Say if I'm in high school, yeah, that would be cool to do. Like I would have the time to do it then. Yeah. But now I don't because I have so many other things I have going on. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be like that, man. Yeah. like I'm, It's just how life works. And it's hard to find people to fucking uh, like jam with. Committed. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that's been my struggle out here. I'm just trying to find people who uh, just want to jam, you know. So let's make some music. Um. So yeah, yeah, that's tight like though. So yeah, I've basically uh been single since fucking eleventh grade, I think. Actually, no. Yeah, eleventh grade. Yeah, I've I've just decided. Yeah, nah. Well, I, I'd it- rather not get into that. Yeah, the, the shit's stressful, bro, and, like, uh, you know, I feel like since we're so young, you know, we're all figuring ourselves out right now, so, like, a relationship... I'd rather have is... my shit together. Exactly, you know, and a lot of the reasons why, like, relationships don't necessarily work out when we're younger is because... Um, we're still trying to find out who we are. Exactly, and, like, the person you fell in love with might not be there in fucking two, three years, you know? Like, everyone's growing, we're changing, yeah. so... The shit just don't work out. That's so. why the statistics of high school relationships don't last. Yeah, they don't. They don't. Like, it's and a sad reality, but they don't last. Because everyone's changing, you know what I mean? You're growing. You're growing as a person. And you're you're outgrowing things. You're outgrowing people. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that, that goes a long way. So, there, 
like speaking of outgrowing people, there's so many people I don't talk to now. Well, people, well, there's this one person that I, he was my best friend for a while, like for like 10 years solid, right? Yeah. But once he got over a thousand Instagram followers, hasn't talked to me since. (laughs) Really? Yeah. And it's, I'm just like, okay, bro. All right, whatever. Yeah, cool. well, that that's you know the 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 fakes will weed themselves out, you know. Uh, and it pisses me off because we were like really good friends too. Yeah, it's gonna happen though. You know, it's 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 a part of life. Like I said, uh, outgrown things. You know, you're gonna outgrow things. And I've noticed that I keep, I don't talk to many people, so I keep a very close knit, like group of people. And you're in that group of people. We don't nice man. We don't it. like talk every day. Yeah, yeah. I, um, you know, I feel like it's like a, a low maintenance friendship. It's, which it's, we're oh, continue. Yeah, yeah. Um, low maintenance friendship. You know, what I mean, you got your shit going on. I got my shit going on. Where we don't uh, need to be up each other's assholes every exactly, minutes. exactly. And you know that those are like the best kinds of relationships. You know, what and I mean? like we have that type of friendship to where. Uh, it's like say i don't talk we we don't talk for like five years or like it's not but like say for example we don't talk for five years because we're busy and then we just hit each other up one day and it's like we just pick up right where we left off exactly exactly you know and that's how a lot of it should be and it's like you don't need to be up someone's ass every yeah we don't need to fucking talk every day you know we don't need to you know, I mean, it would be cool if we did, but we would yeah, be yeah. bored. We would be bored within the first week of each other. Let's be honest. No, facts, facts. Because, <laughs> like, know. like I'm just saying, I love you, dude, but I don't Likewise, think I could talk man. to you for a fucking week straight. No, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, fucking, we'd run out of shit to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Yo, I feel like today? after yeah. this, we're going to not talk to each other for a while and then just, you know, come up with other shit. Yeah, once we get the uh, the, the, the other podcast going yeah part two so um that's what i'm trying to do there's several people that i already have a podcast with that i want to <laughs> freak you out for a second yeah the, <laughs> looking in the camera so um that kind of made me think i'm gonna have there's several people i've had on the podcast yeah that i want to bring back but just the circumstances at hand because everybody you know that's how life is. Pe- people have their own lives. I don't need to be up someone's ass every 15 minutes. Yeah. The only reason I was, if I schedule an interview with somebody and like, I'm up their ass about it. Like, I, w- I was up your ass, wasn't I? I was nah, like, not, not too bad, bro. Not too bad. You, you know what I mean? But I understand it. Like you gotta be, you gotta be uh, like, like consistent, determined with it. You know what I mean? Like, like truthfully, if you didn't uh, hit me up like the the two times you did, we wouldn't be doing this right now. You know, because I mean? yeah, the only reason if I schedule an interview with someone, I I'm up their ass about it because I scheduled the interview for that day. Yeah, and I've I've set I've set aside an entire fucking day in order to talk to that person for like three hours or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean, exactly. So that's why I'm up so. I'm like up your, your time is just as important as, as their, time. their time. They can't yeah, just so. blow me off and be like, oh, yeah, I'll do this for you. Day comes ghost. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? You can't yeah. fucking do that. Yeah, my bad. I'm I, didn't, running, I didn't ghost, but uh, like yeah, I'm I, running. I a, really I'm not running a business here, but it, it's kind of kind of yeah, the same yeah. deal. Well, I, gotta I got a, like I got that, a show. You know? Yeah, I got a show. I got to run. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh we've talked about fucking everything (laughs) yeah man i think we covered all bases we've talked about life music tattoos uh movies i i i I don't even know like as far as it's 11 19 right now so we've been going for a good three hours and uh uh, we, we beat the record, right? Yeah, the record was yesterday at two hours and like <laughs> 17 minutes. All right, I think we beat it. So, um, hopefully, next time it'll be in person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, I gotta. Um, I'd be visiting Cali, or I'd be visiting visiting Cali pretty uh, frequently. So. Uh, yeah, I'll be moving to uh, Arizona soon too. Oh really? Yeah, that's close to me yeah. anyway. Maybe but like, I'll be moving to Arizona because there's a whole wrestling school out there, and there's oh, nice, like nice. the college I want to go to out there and a bunch of stuff. So, how the end of the show goes is, what do you say we wrap it up? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, plug your shit. Plug my shit? Yeah, plug your shit. Like social media is whatever. Oh, like, what, okay. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, what okay, what okay. what the fuck do you think I was saying? Bro, I thought you meant like unplug my mic or something. Plug your shit. I, damn, I ain't heard. Okay, okay. Follow that, me on. That's how I talk. <laughs> my bad, man. My bad. Okay, uh, follow me on Instagram, underscore Terrence, underscore Miller, underscore. Probably going to change that. Um, I'll, I'll, it'll be all linked in the description. Don't worry. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much on only on Instagram. Um, I'm going to be working on it, Twitter here pretty soon because uh, I know all the shit goes down on Twitter. Twitter's um, a fucking. Uh, one thing i gotta tell you is that you gotta you gotta pick your battles with twitter because yeah, yeah there's one it. day where twitter can be nice a nice place <laughs> and then the assholes come out of the woodwork and they're like yeah, Fuck yeah. you, and then it just yeah. twitter becomes twitter's a headache yeah I, i'm gonna i definitely want to check that out because i hear a lot of good yet bad things about twitter then again twitter is one of the fucking funniest places you can ever be yeah, yeah, and that's uh, Reddit's pretty cool too. I'll be on Reddit. Yeah, Reddit's pretty cool. All right, continue. Is that it? Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. The only social media I got. Um, yeah, man. Uh, thanks for having me on the Eddie, show, dude. Much dude, appreciated, dude. Thanks for fucking coming on. I've been struggling course, for man. guests. So. Nah, man. Yeah, man. My <laughs> I pleasure, know that's my pleasure. It's really weird that I'm struggling for guests, but no, nah, it's all right. That's how it be. All right. So thank summer. you, ladies and gentlemen for joining me for the culture shock and i've been your host seth mckendry this has been the man himself terry miller and uh thanks for listening see you later